This is Jocko Podcast number 102 with Echo Charles and me, Jocko Willink. Good evening, Echo. Good evening. And we are rolling into some Q&A from the interwebs. Sure. So let's go. Cool. Right to it. Jocko, is there ever a good time to use an ultimatum? (laughs) That's a great question. And I think the answer is actually, I think when everyone thinks about the answer, I think it's pretty self-evident. I think a lot of people will agree with it. Okay, so is there ever a good time to use an ultimatum? I think sometimes there is, Mm. but it's seldom. Mm. It's actually very seldom. But when enough is truly enough, (laughs) then you gotta draw the line and you gotta hold the line, right? So you gotta make an ultimatum. Mm. Uh, One thing that is extremely credible is that you should never make an ultimatum that you won't or can't keep yeah yeah right like a bluff yeah don't bluff if you say it do it yeah and what's interesting from a job perspective Mm -hmm. so like in, in the workplace perspective Let's say up the chain of command. Mm. Up the chain of command, it's not good, right? So so let's say you're my boss and I come in and say, Echo, I want to raise, I want to buy this Friday, or I'm out of here, mm. right? That's an ultimatum, mm. and that means I'm trying to hold you hostage. <laughs> Most people do not like being held hostage. Mm. So my, my chances of actually supporting what you're trying to make happen are very small because I'm actually mad at you. Yeah. I don't want to support you. Oh, you're a big critical guy because you press record and you made some videos for me. Sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. it's like that. Yeah, yeah. But you're throwing an ultimatum at me. Yeah. Oh, well, that, that's where we're at. Yeah, like, we yeah. couldn't have a conversation. We couldn't come to an agreement. So you're gonna walk into me. I'm the boss. Yeah. I just reversed roles. Right, so you're right. gonna walk into me. Sense. I'm the boss. And you're gonna say, Jocko, I want a raise and I want it now, or I am out of here on Friday. That's my ultimatum. Yeah. What well, What are you doing? Yeah. Right? Are you building a relationship with me? No. Are you giving any room to negotiate or maneuver? Are you giving yourself any room to maneuver? No, no not really. you're not. You're not giving yourself any room to maneuver. Yeah. So that one generally doesn't work very well. Mm. Now, now, if you have another job offer that someone's put in front of you that's legit mm. and it's good and it's solid, and, and you come into me and say, hey, Jocko, I got another job offer. They want an answer by Friday. Here's what they're going to pay me. I'm not, this isn't a threat. I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm being straight up with you. Yeah. But if you don't give me what I want by Friday, I'm going to have to leave and go because I got I to gotta improve my future. Yeah, yeah. And I'd say, hey, man, that sounds like a great deal working for them. Go. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. But that, so that's, that's an ultimatum, but yeah. it's a rational one, yeah, right? Yeah. Because you actually have a backup and you actually are trying to be straightforward with me. Yeah. So, so that's an ultimatum, but it's, it, it's like a logical one. Mm. Now, down the chain of command, People don't like ultimatums either. For instance, you know, uh, Echo, if you don't have this project done by Friday, you're fired. So, so now I put a big ultimatum on you. And you don't like that any more than the boss. People don't like having ultimatums put on them. Yeah. So what you really do, if you have to use ultimatums down the chain of command, you should check your leadership real, real quick. Because you've made some mistakes, right? People don't understand the deadlines. People don't understand what it is you want them to do. People don't understand why they're doing what they're doing. There's all kinds of things that they don't understand if you have to start throwing ultimatums around as a boss. Yeah. So really, if you find yourself using ultimatums, then you, you need to check your leadership. Now, that being said, if you, if I've talked to you, if I've coached you, if I've counseled you, if I've done a written statement on you and told you exactly what it is that I need Echo to do, and now we've we passed the point of no return, and I go, okay, Echo, here's what I asked you to do. You didn't do it. This is the ultimatum. If you don't start making three videos a week, you are not going to be here anymore. Mm. And you'd say, you'd either say, okay, well, I'm going to do it, or Screw Jocko, he's a jerk, I'm out of here. Mm. Either way, I've moved forward because you weren't doing it before. And that's sort of, I know that that example is, yeah, kind (laughs) of hits close to home. (laughs) So ultimatums, be very, very careful. Make sure if you're gonna use it, it's gotta be real. You've gotta enforce it and 
check yourself. Don't don't mm-hmm. don't get yourself in a position where you can't maneuver anymore. That's the biggest. That to me, that's the biggest point. Yeah. You never want to take away your ability to move maneuver. Yeah. You don't want to do that. Yeah, it makes sense. And if or it feels like anyway, just how you kind of said it to me. Well, that first one where the tone has like a lot to do with it. Yeah, like how you were like the you know your legitimate logical ultimate. Right, right, right. It seemed like. It wasn't like the first one. The first one, like, give me this or I'm out of here kind of thing. And then the second, your second example yep. was sort of like, hey, okay. you know, this like, is what's this going is on? And yeah, it feels like if someone did that to me, either way, up or down, I feel like it would still maintain the relationship, you know? Like, let's say, yeah. let's say it worked out and it was like, okay, you know, yeah. whatever, you got the raise or whatever. Yep. And if you said in that crazy tone or whatever, or yeah. that real fed up tone, uh, yeah. You're still like, okay, cool. We we worked yep. it out. I got what I want, but like but um but we know we've dinged the relationship. Yeah, it's dinged. And yeah. we don't want to be dinging our relationships. No. We want to be building those things. Yeah. And I think a lot of times people like they'll ding the relationship <sighs> and then they'll just move on like nothing. But meanwhile the other mm, person's like, Hey, no. Like don't uh, don't forget Time. what you said to me and how you said that last week. Time heals the wounds, but it doesn't remove the scars. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I old feel like that's song, a by the way. Slap shot. Damn, respect. All right. All right cool. Next quest. Next quest. Graduated high school, crushed it, straight A's. Boom. Helped my classmates, was kind of kind and helpful and expected them to be. Meanwhile, they put me down, mocked me, never loved me. In a room with 30 people, I was always alone. Inner voice tells me to go after the past. Seek revenge. Keep looking at their profiles. Profiles, like online profiles. Yeah, social media. Yeah, yeah. Should I go? (laughs) Now, he's got a series of questions here. Yeah. Should I go after them and try to fix the past, either by revenge or else? Should Should I remove them from social media and leave the the Facebook group? Should I attend the reunion? Why have they even been in my life? Okay, so let's break those down. Number one. Should I go after them and try to fix the past either by revenge or something else? The answer to that, in my opinion, Mm -hmm. is no, man. Mm -hmm. Who cares? They're high school kids. Move on. Get on with your life. Yeah. Disagree? Agree? Agree. Okay. That that one to me is pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about these humans. Mm -hmm. I actually had a couple conversations with with, uh, my oldest daughters. Haven't had this one with my son yet, but my older daughters, which is... Hey, look, these people that are around right now that you think are so important in high school, mm-hmm. <laughs> they're not. Yeah. You, you know, some of them might be. You might have some lifelong friends from high school. I get that. Yeah. But these people that are not nice to you, you won't be thinking about them. Yeah. So I don't, I'm don't. i not sure how old this individual is, mm-hmm. but he's got a couple more years before he won't be thinking about these people anymore. Yeah. So just get there earlier. Question two, should I remove them from social media and leave this Facebook group? Okay, this is a little bit tricky, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Uh, first of all, if you can, if you can stay, if you can keep them on social media, but ignore them completely, just leave them alone. Yeah. Just leave it and just totally ignore them. Yeah. Because when you leave them or whatever, you're kind of, aren't you kind of making a scene? Yes. Okay. I, I just want to make sure. So you don't want to make a scene. Well, yeah. Like when you unfriend them or whatever, which yeah. didn't you and I have some situation yeah. with the, yeah, we did. <laughs> yeah, actually. <laughs> so, okay. So. I know that I, wait, wait, who unfriended you? My wife. Yep. Okay. I so, think you did it. Well, no, no, no. I didn't even know how to do it. No, no. You, but I, you, I, you figured it out. No, I didn't. So I didn't ever have social media until two years ago. But all of a sudden I saw Echo, <laughs> friends with my wife. And I said, wait, 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 wait. She's like showing me something. And she says, and I see Echo. And I said, well, why are you friends with people that, why are you friends with people that I know? Mm-hmm. Un, here, click unfriend on that and mm-hmm. I didn't even know it was a big deal. I just thought you know, hey, that means <laughs> and <laughs> And then I didn't realize it was a big deal. It's a big I deal, man. Yep. I unfriended him messed up. I yeah. thought you did it per- purposefully Knowing it's a big deal, but not understanding that it's even a bigger deal <laughs> than you know The kind where you're like unfriend him as a joke. That was like it was totally your personality at that time. Oh, you like, thought I did that to you? Yeah, like as a joke like unfriend him. Did you know? you'd say something to me like immediately? Uh, or was it did, did a month go by where I, I didn't know. make a joke about it? I, f- I forget. <laughs> I forget but. So so it is kind of making a scene. Yeah, if you if you unfriend this person or you leave the group 
then you're just creating a little firestorm. But I will say this: if you can't, if you can't keep yourself from checking on them, yeah, yeah, yeah. then you might have to do that. Mm. So try it mm. for a couple of weeks. Just say, I'm not looking at them. Yeah, let them go. Just leave them. If you can't do that, then delete them and leave the group or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, number three: should I attend the reunion? My answer to that is negative. Mm. Don't. Why would you? These people are negative. They have they they bring back negative memories. They didn't treat you well. They. But why would you? You don't need them. Move on. Mm-hmm. Again, key word. I think move on. And then the last question is, why have they even been in my life? Well, I think just like anything else bad that happens in life, the things that are bad that happen in life can either teach you or break you. Mm. And you gotta decide what you want them to do. I vote that you you allow it to teach you. I, I, I vote that you learn from these people That you learn how to forget about the past, that you learn how to ignore people that are negative, that you learn to control your vengeful ideas, and that you learn to move on into the future where you're going to meet better people and better times are to be had. That's what I would recommend. Don't worry about these people from the past. They're caught up in this weird world. Yeah. High school. This is high school, school. right? We're caught up in high school world. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about high school. Yeah. Get into the world. Yeah. Right? Big time. <laughs> I, I, well, well yeah. and I got, I've had one daughter that now graduated from high school. I got two kids in high school right now. Yeah. Drama. There's drama. drama but actually, believe life. it or not, there hasn't been a lot of drama with my kids. Yeah. Not a lot of high school drama. That doesn't surprise me, really. But, but yeah. I see it. It yeah, does happen. It, oh, yeah. That's and I life. remember the drama. I'd say, it, uh, my guess, I don't know. It's been a long time since high school for me personally, but... Yeah, man, I think that's life, you know? High school is drama. Mm. Shoot, a bunch of kids not knowing nothing. D- is there more drama in high school than there is in life? Maybe it's because it's stuck together. Yeah, like it you, seems you, like it. You're well, stuck it depends, there. depends on your life. Like, if you just consider a typical high school versus my life, yeah, way more in high school. It's <laughs> drama in my I mean, you're <laughs> drama. That's it. And you're not really drama. <laughs> really? <laughs> the, yeah, it, it, they're all high school, all of them, even yeah. this guy, obviously, you know, so it's yeah. going to feel like way more than it is for sure. Uh, but, you know, when you when you the the further you go along in life, the, the more you realize that this means less yeah. and less these types of things. Anyway, when you consider it, high school is really just for learning. Sure. You learn like yeah. these social things. Well, yeah, and you stuff learn like social that. things, too. You know what I just thought of is is what's interesting about this is if you're looking back on high school. Either with fond memories or with negative memories, either yeah. way, it's not a great thing. Because yeah. you could be like Uncle Rico from Napoleon Dynamite, <laughs> right? Who's yeah. constantly living back his yeah. high school football games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's wishing he made that pass and, yeah. you know what I mean? Won yeah. the state championship or whatever. Yeah, you get that. That's not good, Mm-mm. right? That, you, that means you're stuck in high school. You peaked yeah. in high school. Yeah. If you're looking back at the negative things, same thing. Yeah, same thing. Who, who, no, move forward. Yeah. I don't, in his defense, though, obviously he just graduated. That's what. So his yeah. life really is this. Yeah, 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 really, yeah, yeah. you know, so it's cool. too new. It's cool. like you know, someone more good stuff's gonna happen, brother. Yeah. Just move on and get after it. Yeah, fully. The social media thing, though. I'll say this, because there's there's little levels of like unfriending whatever. You can unfollow someone. I, I'm assuming this is Facebook. I don't know. There, you know, there's yeah. so many. He could be talking about other stuff, but. On Facebook, you can still remain remain friends, but just unfollow them so you won't get all their stuff. Do they know that? I don't think so. So they're not insulted I'm sure by many it. people have unfollowed me, and I don't know <laughs> that. I've never gotten in the alert or whatever. Um, I would say leave the group fully. Oh, so yeah. you're giving... Well, so you, I Facebook would listen to group. your advice more than me because I don't understand it as much as you do. I, I yeah. don't. I don't understand the Facebook group thing. Yeah. I mean, depends how many people are it in the group. It seemed like we was going to make a scene... I don't like to make a scene. Yeah. So I'd be like, well, no, I'm just going to ignore it. Yeah. I don't think leaving the group is a scene. If it is, I mean, obviously it depends on how many people in the group. The less people in the group, the more of a scene it's going to be. Or if he's always posting, if he's the head of the group or something like this, then yeah. You know but, how in the past there was etiquette schools? I, yeah, went, yeah. I went to I went to etiquette classes when I went to Oscar Candidate School. 
in no Pensacola, kidding. Florida, and they teach you which knife to use, yeah, which yeah, fork yeah, to yeah. use, and all that stuff. And they teach you things. For instance, you might not know this. If you take a bite of food and there's something in that bite of food that you don't want to eat, yeah. a bone, a whatever, uh-huh. the way to properly get it out of your mouth is yeah. to use your fork, put it on the fork, and put it back down on the plate. So like, yeah, okay, gotcha. They would say the same. So that's the type of thing. Yeah, yeah, that's good. There should be a class. Oh, or we're going to a point where people are going to need a class on social, social media, media etiquette. Yeah. Actually, that's not a bad idea. You should teach it. All right. <laughs> let's move on. I, <laughs> Thanks, I'm done. Bro. Yeah. Yeah, the high school. I, yeah. I move on, I, dude. I agree with move you. on, brother. Yeah. Move on. Let's move on from that question. <laughs> there it is. Man, hey, you know, that's like, that's like, you know, that's, we focused on social media, but that's just about everything, right? Yeah. Anything that you're caught up in. Yeah. yeah. Anything that you're caught up in. Yeah. And that's dragging you down. Just move on. Yeah. Whether it's a girl, whether it's the job you should have had, whether it's the investment you should have made, whether it's the, the house you didn't buy that you should have, all those things. Yeah. Move on, man. It's gone. Move on. Yeah. It seems like high school is this really common one. You know, like the, the old classic story of the person who got bullied in high school and then going then back now, for the vengeance. Yeah. You know, like that kind of stuff. But I th- yeah, the more, and this is what it feels like too. I don't know. I'm not everyone, but the more you do for yourself after high school, oh, for sure. the less high school is going to mean. For sure. So like this isn't going to, and you know how they say, what yeah. is the Uncle Rico, man, he, he was selling Tupperware <laughs> yeah, and it wasn't working out good for him. Yeah. He, see, high school is still a big deal to him. Yeah. Yeah. You know, guys who are like, they always talk about high school football or whatever. Just mm. in, and there's guys like that for sure. Um, then you can, it's kind of an indicator, you know, that, oh, you know, you might not be doing much now, you know, yeah. especially if they're like 40 or something like that. Check. All yeah. right. Next question. I'm thinking about starting jujitsu in my MMA gym, but the instructor is a brown belt. Should I go train with him or look for a black belt? Well, if you're at an MMA gym, they have brown belt. That's awesome. I trained with the brown belt. I think he's probably really good. I think it's probably fight oriented because it's in a fight to fight gym. Sure. Which is good in my opinion. And you know, the, the fact of the matter is, and we've said this before, brown belt, purple belt, black belt. There's good teachers in all those blue belt, you know, borderline. Really? You can learn some good fundamentals from a solid blue belt though. I agree. But, um, and also there's some, black belts that are not good teachers. And there's some purple belts that are phenomenal teachers. Yeah. So yeah, go train. Yeah. I think that's a pretty simple question. Yep. Yeah. The, it depends, you know how, how you just said like some, some purple belts are great teachers. So the, the belt usually for the most part just indicates the, the, the vast, like the knowledge, mm-hmm. you know, so it's given that they're a good teacher. So yeah, if it's a brown belt, shoot, that's a lot of knowledge. And just given that he's an all right or better teacher, that's going to be legit. And there is actually blue belts as well. You know, yeah, people, I shouldn't even said that. There's some blue belts that are really good teachers. Yeah. Although it does, you know, you get a purple belt teacher versus a blue belt teacher and they're good yeah. teachers both of them he, of course you're gonna want the because pur- he's gonna have more yeah. knowledge the yeah, purple belt you know so you know blue belt yeah, in most he, cases yeah yeah it is in, yeah, most, in cases. most cases yeah but if you're just starting bro you can pray you're just gonna be like a sponge yeah like if someone you like, don't even know what you, you know what's interesting you could probably barely tell if you're a white belt and you roll with a purple belt and a black belt, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Yeah, yeah. You, all you know is you got your Correct. ass whooped. Yeah, That's what yeah. you know. Yeah. That's all you know. You don't know how easy it was for them because it's the same level for both. Of them. Neither one yeah. of those people is trying hard against a white belt. Yeah. And yeah. And if they know how to teach, like I said, it, it, he's an instructor. He's the instructor. He's yeah. a brown belt. Yeah. yeah. He's going to be fine. In fact, that's way more common. Than you think. I mean, we're in San Diego. Yeah. Even in San Diego, though, there's a brown belt instructor for sure. Yeah. And they're good, too. Yeah. And especially if you're just starting, yeah, man, good, do that. And yeah, just like how you said, though, sometimes the black belt instructor, he'll be good at rolling, he'll be good at jujitsu, and he can win tournaments, but he can't really instruct that mm-hmm. good. Or they, or you get like situations where, I mean, I wouldn't say it's super common, but it's there for sure. Is, um, you know, you ever heard the, the expression curse of knowledge? Right. It's like you've been a black belt for so long Mm -hmm. or anything. Right. Just so good at something that you forget what it's like to be a beginner. Yeah. So you kind of 
you know, you might skip over some details that are kind of critical if you're a beginner. You know, you just kind of, your subconscious yeah. just as, assumes that this person knows a certain amount of things, you know? Yeah. Kinda, you can get that. Like, that's, I think, a lot of times what jams up a, a, a real advanced Dean was watching at it. Andy and Noah roll. We were doing some rounds with Andy, and Noah tucked his foot underneath the far arm on an arm lock from across, like cross side, like a regular arm lock. Mm -hmm. And Noah's tucking his foot under there. Mm -hmm. And Dean says, Dean's, you know, hey, that's a really good detail. To, uh, who taught you that? Mm -hmm. And I was like, I taught him. <laughs> and he was like, I taught him. <laughs> and no, but I, that, that's something that Dean taught me. Yeah. And I don't know who taught Noah, but it's just, that's the type of detail that you're talking about mm -hmm. where that is a small thing. You gotta be in jujitsu for, a, you gotta get a lot of other things right before someone says, hey, when you're arm locking someone on the far side, put your put your toes yeah. basically underneath their arm to yeah. secure their shoulder a little bit better yeah that's that's deep yeah there's so there's those kind of details mm -hmm. there's another thing where i had a, a a finish for dean or dean was teaching me an arm lock finish and i would try it 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 and it would, would never work mm -hmm. i tried it on him 50 times and finally one day he says hey when you do that move put the pressure here instead of here the next time I did it to him worked. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then one little detail. Yeah. It's the same thing happened the other day with Andy. I was going with Andy and we were doing arm lock escapes. And he said, hey, you're putting your pressure here. He showed me where I was putting the pressure. He said, put it here. And I was like, hmm. Next time I did it to him, he's like, that hurts so bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's weird. It's yeah. the little details mm -hmm. that, again, the better the instructor is, the the more details you're gonna get. And most, well, what's important about this is until you are get to a certain level, you those details don't even mean anything to you. Yeah. Because you, you can't worry about where you're putting some little detail on an arm lock when you don't yeah. even know how to do the arm lock. Yeah, you gotta yeah, be yeah. pretty damn good at the arm lock before you start looking at the little yes. tiny details. Yeah, and then there, and that's like the, that was actually gonna be part of the point where you get a, a, a black belt super advanced level instructor but he's not necessarily that good at being a teacher he'll start teaching those details and all the stuff and yeah. focusing and whoa, whoa you just skipped over the part to teach them how to do the actual arm bar but he's like kind of subconsciously they'll be like he'll the curse of knowledge says that it's kind of just assumed this is you know, this is good for the jiu-jitsu journey i used to say this when when i'm teaching you a jiu-jitsu move Let's say there's 10 things that you have to do to make the jujitsu move work. I can teach you five of them. Mm. The other five you have to figure out because it's where you're putting your weight and it's yeah. where you're putting your balance. Dean might be able to teach you seven. Yeah, maybe, maybe if you take a different class, Andy will teach you an eighth one. Mm. But there's things that you have to figure out on your own on top of the things that you can be shown. Yeah. That's why you gotta roll. Yeah, big time. <laughs> you gotta roll. Cause yeah. that, that's the only way you figure out if it actually works or not and what yeah. little adjustments you have to make. Yeah. Yeah, fully. And especially if you have a good instructor, they can see it too. You know, like you you know, when you drill something or when you're mm -hmm. doing the technique just with your partner and mm -hmm. stuff, you're like, Okay, yeah, good, that's good technique. And then oh, when, when the guy's moving and trying to defend or whatever, it's like, I don't know what I'm doing wrong, it's not working. <laughs> but and really the obvious answer is yeah, because he's not letting you do it. But you know, someone like an instructor can look and see like, Oh, look, you're letting him do this or what or whatever. You're forgetting to do this. Check. But nonetheless, yeah, I, I agree with you. Go train with the brown belt guy. Yeah. See how it Go is. train. Yeah. But if you're not learning nothing, then you can make that evaluation. But the fact that it's a brown belt. You'll be learning a ton. You'll be learning a ton given that for sure. Next question. You talk about playing the game, quote unquote, to win. But what about people that play the game to win for themselves? And how do I defeat them? That's a good, good question. And it, yeah. it, it hit me. Yeah. When I saw that question, I was, ooh, that's a good Point. And that's a good, there's a very important distinction there because I'm always saying play the game. Yeah. Right? Hey, you got to play the game. You got to, you got to build the relationships with the boss and you got to learn what they like and you got to toe the party line. You got to do the little things. You got to support the, the corporate headquarters or the boss or the man, yeah. <laughs> right? Or whatever entity is up in that ivory tower. I want you to play the game. Mm. Get them on your side. And the reason I 
say to do those things is that so you can get more control so that people ask your opinion so that you get listened to so that perhaps you get promoted which is good mm-hmm. but the reason you're doing all those things the reason that you're playing the game is to help your team accomplish the mission that's what you are trying to do. It's to help your team accomplish the mission. Now, the the other side of that is what this question is about. People that are playing the game for personal gain. They they play the game so that they can get listened to so they can drive their personal agenda. <laughs> yeah. So they so they can get promoted. And they want to get promoted so that they can abuse their power. Mm. And maybe that abuse of power is just is just working less. Maybe it's making other people do the crap jobs. Whatever the, whatever the case may be. But they've got an agenda and they're going to try and get promoted so they can take care of themselves. Mm. And that is not why I tell you to play the game. And that's not why I played the game. Mm. And I definitely played the game. And I played to win. But I played because I wanted my my squad or my platoon or my task unit or my training command to be able to better accomplish our mission. Mm. That's why I played the game. Now, there is a secondary benefit of playing the game and that is that you could possibly get promoted earlier. You could get praise from the boss that looks good on your record and, and all those things can happen when you're playing the game. But that's just like collateral sort of fringe benefits. But that's not why you're playing the game. You play the game to help the team win. And when the team wins, you win. Which also makes the team win again. So it's like a positive cycle because you start developing a good reputation. Now you get more leeway from the boss. The more leeway you get from the boss, the more you have the ability to make maneuvers on the battlefield. The more you can maneuver on the battlefield, the more offensive you can be. The more offensive you can be, the more you win. Mm -hmm. And then you get more ability to move more. Because your boss is giving you even more room to maneuver. So it's a, it's a cycle. It's a good, positive cycle. Now, when you have someone that's on the team that's playing the game for themselves, first of all, n- no one likes that person, right? Mm. Everyone can see that person. Yeah. <laughs> no one likes them. And there's, believe me, the military, the military has unbelievable people that play the game for the best possible reasons to help their platoon and help the mission and help succeed. Mm-hmm. There's also plenty of people in the military and in every every different line of work. There's plenty of people that play the game because they want to. They want to. They they're looking out for themselves. Yeah. Looking out for number one, right? Isn't that the expression? Sure. They're looking out for yeah. number one. There's plenty of people, and I dealt with people like that all the time. And what did I do? I used it to my advantage. And I'll tell you what, I would get in their head. And, and what I would do is I would make them think that the best way for them to win for themselves personally was for the team to win. I would get that into their head because a lot of times they miss that point. Mm-hmm. They're looking out for themselves. They're not worried about the team. Mm-hmm. And I would get them thinking that they're going to look the best if the team wins. Mm-hmm. Hey, if you really want to look good, the, the best way you can get promoted is if we look good. You know, if, if the team does great, mm-hmm. if you get us the gear we want and the equipment we want, the training that we need. That's the best way you're going to look awesome because we're going to succeed more and that's going to make you look good. Mm-hmm. And I'm, of course, I'm going to be more tactful and I'm not saying it like that, but I'm right. saying it. Right, right. That's I'm getting the, the word. I'm getting the, I'm getting the messaging mm-hmm. is there. You know, I'm going to be saying things like, hey, you know, our boss doesn't like, our boss doesn't like leaders that complain. Right? Mm-hmm. You know, hey, you can tell the boss he doesn't like complainers. You know what I mean? Little, mm-hmm. little things like that, right? Yeah. Hey, the boss, the boss likes to hear the truth about stuff. He wants to know, you know what I mean? Little things like that. And you know, here's the thing, that person, that person might get the promotion because what you've done is you've helped them act correctly, actually. Mm. And there's a chance, a decent chance, a good chance even, that they carry that forward. They realize that, hey, the best way to play the game is to help the team. Mm. And the best way to look good is to help, is to make the team good and succeed at the mission. Mm -hmm. And... It's really, well, you know, one of the classic cases, and we, you know, we'll get into ownership a little bit, but if something goes wrong, right, the person that's looking out for themselves blames everyone else. Mm-hmm. And, and so that's a challenge, right? 
because once you start blaming, once that boss starts blaming everyone, then the whole team starts blaming each other. So how do you fix that? Well, it's, we've talked about this a million times. You, you know, you step up and say, hey, you know what, boss, this is my fault. Mm-hmm. And the boss goes, that's right, it's your fault. And there's a, there's a good chance that they recognize how positive that is. Mm-hmm. And it may take a while, and it may never happen, because some people are just savages, right? Some people are just complete. They only care about themselves. Mm -hmm. They only care about the next promotion and getting the next award and getting the next bit of recognition. There's people like that. Mm. They're, They're horrible. They're horrible. They exist, but they're pretty small. Most people, if they see, hey, this this is working for this guy, it can work for me too, and that starts to spread. And the other thing that happens, I think, is if someone's a, just a flagrant self-promoter, mm-hmm. that you might get them one promotion because you were there to kind of make them look good. Mm-hmm. But the next time around, they're going to get seen. They're going to get found out. They're yeah. going to people are going to realize what kind of person they are, and that's that's where it catches up with them. Yeah. So. You keep playing the game. You keep you keep working hard. Don't worry about them, and actually do your best to help them out. Mm-hmm. The person that's like self promoting, do your best to help them out. Mm-hmm. If they're the boss, make them look good. I always want to make my boss look good. Yeah. Yep. It's yep. gonna help you in the long run. It hurts sometimes. Yeah. It's hard to do sometimes. Yep. Our ego gets in the way sometimes. Got to put that ego in check. Yeah. Because what's more important? Because if you're my boss, Echo and you're doing this just to make yourself look good, if I then undermine you, well, and now we don't accomplish the mission as well, I'm actually a bad person because I didn't do my best to accomplish the mission, mm-hmm. right? We yeah. didn't look good. Yeah. I'm not worried about how we look, but we failed in our mission, or we didn't do our mission to the best of our ability. Yeah. So no, I'm not gonna let that happen. You wanna look great? Cool, I wanna make you look great, because yeah. I want us to look great doing our mission, because that's what's important to me. Yeah. And if so, so some of the collateral damage of that is that you look great even though you're a jerk mm-hmm. and I get you promoted, that's okay. Because eventually mm-hmm. you're gonna get found out. Yeah. Or you're gonna learn to be a better person and to support the team and that's how you got promoted and you're gonna realize that and you'll become a good leader. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with that when, like I always have where People can see that too. You know, oh, like, they can see it. You know, like if your boss is like a self promoter or whatever, and you have it in your head. I understand. I understand this because I've been in a situation where I'm like, shoot, I've, I kind of feel inside like I don't want to like go make an effort to make him look good, kind of thing, because it's like he doesn't deserve it, kind of mm-hmm. thing. And what, like, what? I'm gonna make him look good, and now everyone's gonna think that he looks good, kind of thing. But then, when you really think about it, no, they're not. Like, they <laughs> no. see exactly they, they see right how they see right through that you know? guy. Yep. Yeah, you're but, right. And the same goes though for you. Like, if you, if you're like to, you know, if you're just focusing on the the positive stuff, you know, you know how like you're, uh, what do they say? You know, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it at mm-hmm. all. If you're mm-hmm. really doing that, like. People notice that too. They're like, man, that, that guy's like really positive. He's, got a good He's really attitude. focusing on yeah. this, you know, kind of thing. Like people see it. And yeah. this doesn't mean you're just Mr. Positive Sugarcoat and everything. And yeah. no, it's not. We're not talking about that. But you are not focusing on the negative. Yeah. Instead of saying, oh, we're horrible at this. You yeah. say, you know what? We got some deficiencies here. Here's what I'm going to do to fix them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How simple is that? You know, just yeah. get better. Yeah, and the the point is, people they see, they see. Don't think that you know, like you're gonna help, you know, make this guy look good, and they're just gonna, they're gonna not see it, you and they're just gonna it. fall for the his trick or something. Bro, they see that. They see most it. of the time. Most of the yeah. time. Most yeah. of the time. That example that you said about um, uh, playing to their ego or whatever, where you're like, hey, you know, you know, you should, you're gonna look really good if we accomplish yeah. it. So you ever seen the movie Moana? <laughs> I saw three minutes of it. Oh, see, there you go. She does. Uh, so the guy, the main guy, is the, the, the demigod, his name is Maui, mm-hmm. played by The Rock, by the way, Dwayne Johnson. Great movie, by the way. Um, she does him like that. She's like, hey, let's, they got to go do this mission, you know, for restore the heart, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. It's a long story. But, and he's like, you know, whatever, reluctant. And he's like, she's like, hey, you'll be a hero again. And he's like, I'm already a hero. She's like, well. No, not for a while. You know, you haven't done anything lately. Dang. But if you do this, mm. then you'll be the hero to everyone. And yeah, and, he, and of course he does it. Of course, but yeah, man, it's good. Good Sometimes show. You gotta play good example. It works. There it is. Proof on on Moana. 
Moana. Next Cheers. question. <clears throat> I have to say that in a very competitive environment, extreme ownership can be used by your enemies or the people that want your position. When you take ownership over all faults of your team members, you guys become you guys become better and get healthier a healthier attitude, but that takes time. So until your team improves and start to get better results, your opponents will take those tens of it was my fault and present them to your boss as proof that yeah, this guy is not good or at least not confident enough and looks weak is not my case. For me, it worked great, but I've seen it happening to few colleagues who just didn't have good team members and they took their extreme ownership for weakness and just took advantage of that. Okay, so what we've got here is what he's saying is extreme ownership. If you're taking extreme ownership of things, your enemies can actually take advantage of that. And in this guy's case, right, like in the like in the earlier stages yeah, of it, yeah. And he said, well, actually, he says that for him it's worked great, yeah. But that he's seen some of his compadres who have started to take ownership, and they're they've got weak team, and the team. What does he say here? What's the words he uses? They didn't have good team members and they took their extreme ownership for weakness and took advantage of it. Okay, mm-hmm. so first of all, out of the gate, if you have weak or bad team members, that is the first thing the leader needs to take ownership of, mm-hmm. right? If you have truly weak and bad team members, then you need to either train them or coach them or get rid of them. That, that's the first thing. So if you've got backstabbing bad team members that are looking to claw you down as the leader, you got a problem with those people and you need to fix that problem. Number one. Mm -hmm. So let's just start with that. Number two. And this is this is there's two two kind of parts of this. There's an insecurity, a level of insecurity, and there's a level of or a, a, a matter of perception. The insecurity is the thing that says, if I say this is my fault, then everyone up and down the chain of command is going to say, fire him, (laughs) fire him. It's his fault. But I I want you to think about how that's actually perceived. If what you do is, let's take the other example, is what you do is you blame everyone else. If that's your attitude, if, if your attitude is, it wasn't my fault, it was his fault, it was her fault, it was their fault, it was not me, I'm just the person in charge, it's not me. Think about that statement. It's not my fault. It's it's my team's fault. Mm. I'm just the person in charge. It's not my fault. <laughs> Think about that. Yeah. Whenever you're placing blame, if you're a leader and you're placing blame on your team, what you're saying is, hey, it's not my fault. It's my team's fault. I'm just the leader here. Mm. I'm not the one out there in the field doing the work. I'm not the one that's making those decisions. I'm not the one that's, I'm not the one that's, you know, uh, interacting with customers. I'm not the one that's doing that. So this isn't my fault, it's my team's fault. Mm. (laughs) Well, meanwhile, guess who's in charge of the team? You are. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So the minute that you start saying it wasn't my fault and it was for everyone else's fault, if you think about how you look to your boss, it's laughable. You look like an idiot. You don't look like a good leader. Mm. So don't Fall for it. And you know what? I'm actually not saying that you'll never get fired if you take ownership. Mm -hmm. Because you know what? If you do something that's really bad, there's absolutely a chance you could get fired. If you do something that cost a bunch of money or was immoral or illegal or you covered something up and or your team covered something up or you did something that was truly wrong Mm -hmm. and you take ownership of it, yeah, you might still get fired. You know what? That happens in the Navy. In the Navy, if your ship runs aground, or like lately there's been some collisions on these ships, and I think uh, Leif and I might talk about those at some point on the podcast, Mm -hmm. but the captain of the ship is done. It doesn't matter if he was on the ship or not. Hmm. He could be, because just because a ship's at sea, the captain might have had to flown to another ship to talk to the admiral. Mm -hmm. If his ship crashes, he's done. Hmm. It doesn't matter if he's there or not. He's responsible for the training. He's responsible for the actions. He's responsible for everything that's happened on that ship. Hmm. And he's getting fired. And he and and also, if he did do something wrong, well, yeah, he's and he takes ownership of it. Doesn't matter. He's getting fired. So I'm not hmm. saying you're never going to get fired. Um, but generally, generally, and this is when I say generally, this is the vast majority of the time. 
This is 99% of the time. Mm. If you take ownership, you don't look like a weak boss, you look like a strong boss that is taking ownership of the problems and is gonna get the problem solved. I say this over and over again. Mm -hmm. And as always, you don't just have to own the problems, you have to own the solutions to the problems too. Mm -hmm. So this is the situation here. You got this guy, people, if you're in charge of a bad team and you're taking ownership, the bad team is what you have to fix. You have to fix it. You have to train them. You have to cur- you have to coach them. You have to mentor them. You have to do all those things. And if you can't get them to get on board with the program, then you got to get rid of them, mm. or get rid of that one or two bad people that are causing the infraction and causing that cancer to spread. Get rid of them. Set the example. Promote somebody that's hungry and young and wants to get after it. Mm-hmm. So you got to take ownership of the team. The problems, the weak people on the team, you got to take ownership of the solutions and get them solved. It seems like, and I kind of noticed this from the beginning. Go. Is that when you take. I was going to cut you off with, I've talked about this before. Sometimes people say, they think if they say, I'll take ownership of this, then the problems, then it's like they're, then they're safe. That's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, they, that is not the case. Yeah, you, just because this, you say, "Hey, this it is my all, fault," hey, it's my fault. I'm taking ownership of this. Done. That doesn't mean the problem is solved. There's yeah. a problem. Yeah, you have to say, "Yes, there's a problem here. I'm taking ownership of it. it's my fault because I'm in charge, and this is what we're going to do to fix it." This and then you have to actually go and fix it. There's the part right there. Yeah, that scene. Because if you come to me twelve times <laughs> and, and you say, "Hey, Jocko, I, I yeah. we didn't get the podcast out." Because I forgot yeah. to hit record. Hey, that's my bust. That's my bust. Oh, okay. Well, hey, from now on, here's what I'm going to do. I'm yeah. going to make sure that we have these things in place. And I hooked up a light. And it's going to, if, if yeah. the thing isn't recording, the, the studio is going to go dark. I don't know if you remember this, because this might be just the way you are. But when we went to. I remember it. No, I'm just kidding. The, where, where did we go? We went, like, last trip we went on we're driving. We went to, oh, Charlie Plum. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was Charlie yeah, yeah, Plum. Yeah. And we were looking for, I can't remember what we were looking for, either the hotel or the, the place or wherever. A steakhouse. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good So steak. we were going and I was kind of navigating and you were kind of navigating, kind of trying to help. Not trying to help, but you were kind of navigating, but kind of not. Mm-hmm. It really seemed like, to me anyway, you were like, okay, I'll let you kind of navigate. And <laughs> we... Uh, <laughs> We took a wrong turn, whatever. You know, we're off Uh track or whatever. And I was like, okay, I got to take extreme ownership right now. Because, like, right now is, like, the perfect time to take extreme ownership. (laughs) Like, Or should I say the worst time not to take extreme ownership, right? So I'm like, oh, no, that's my bad. Like, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do this kind of thing. But at the same same time, you, like, really aggressively took ownership. Like, you're almost to the point where at at first I was like, are you joking? Mm. But you weren't joking. You were serious. You were like, take take the next turn right here. And then we'd come close to it. You'd be like, this turn right here. This turn right here. Like, you, at all costs, you were not letting me, you know, make a mistake again. But, which is funny, though. But it is a good example. Because not only, I mean, in your mind, you, you put forward the more important part. You were like, okay, I'm going to take, it's like your actions said that it's your fault, and but your the solutions that, that you had, even though they're real extreme or whatever, <laughs> like that was the part that you were implementing. I wasn't a be- jerk about it though, no, was no, it? No, 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 no. Just no. like, hey, all right, you know what, here's yeah. the deal. Next turn is going to be a yeah. 0.5 miles. Here, it's coming up on the right. Yeah. All right, right hand turn right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With you know what's everything. funny is that's how, that's how we navigate in the day. Oh, for real? Yeah. It's actually good. I in mean, the teams, it's... It's really squared away. Yeah, when the, you're in a convoy of military vehicles, yeah, it's awesome. And you know what's bad, really, on my part is that at first I thought you were joking, like patronizing me. You know? Yeah, no, I'm don't do that. But that's thing. really kind of my ego. You know, kind of oh. as if to say, like, mm. duh, I, you said the next turn, this is the next turn, I can figure that out. You know, I'm smart enough to figure that out, kind of thing. But if I'm like, okay, this is the system, and mm-hmm. you know, Jock was gonna, you know, tell me, and he's gonna be detailed about it and make absolutely sure we don't miss the turn, kind of thing, then you're right. Dang, that's a good way to navigate, you know. Mm-hmm. But two people got to be on board. But nonetheless, like, dang, you had the solution, you know. <laughs> so it goes back to it. Like, it seems like back to this question: um, your enemies could take advantage early on, right? As it's as the extreme ownership culture is trying to take hold, kind of. That's what I kind of get from it. 
Um, like, even early on. That's what I think, too. Even early if you're like, on. Okay, this you, is my hey, fault. Th- yeah, Here's exactly. what we're doing. Even early on, you don't look like an idiot. You actually yeah. look squared away because you go, here are the problems that we're having yeah, exactly. that I've identified. Here's what we're going to do to fix them. Yeah. No one knows where we're driving right now. You're kind of half driving and half paying attention. I'm over here talking or doing whatever. Guess what? We made a mistake. It's not going to happen again. I got this. Hey, yeah. right turn coming up 500 meters. Yeah. Right turn. Get in the left hand lane. Prepare to go. Le- you know what I mean. That's yeah, what, yeah. that's how we solve the problem. Yep. And and for, to think in the beginning, you know, you get there and you say, "Hey, here's the problem. Here's what we're going to do. Fix it." Yeah. It's not, "Hey, everything's my fault." That's not ex- yeah, every, yeah, extreme. Yeah. Ownership isn't, "Hey, everything's my fault. Everything's my fault." <laughs> and now, can you just yeah. leave me alone? Yeah, especially, no. Especially not in that. You place. actually okay. have to take ownership of the problems. I said that over and over again, but hey, you know what? Just like jujitsu, you got to see a move a bunch of different times, a bunch of different ways. Yeah, bunch of different ways before you start to truly understand it. Yeah, I think that's with everything. Do you ever do you ever hear yourself make an excuse? No, not anymore. (laughs) Not anymore. You're done. Like I know, like you know how like how you say like you can feel it kind of yeah yeah right. You can see those excuses coming a mile away. And here's the thing: you have them in your head. Yeah. Excuses, complaining, um, uh, complaining about like how you feel, mm. you know, like when there's something to be done. I'm not mm. saying you know in every single case, but when there's something to be done, be like, oh, I'm tired of doing this, or I don't know, whatever. That was just a random example, but man, I can see that stuff coming a mile away. Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely something that you get used to and you get good at. Yeah, yeah, right. You get good at. Yeah. You get good at saying. You get good at not saying. Well, you know. <laughs> One of my assistant platoon commanders, mm-hmm. who's an awesome guy, and he had this thing, if he was going to disagree with me, he would say the word well, meaning, you know, well, let's think about it, but he had a yeah. funny way of saying it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He would say, well, like that. <laughs> <laughs> and sure. and so I'd say, hey, we, you, you know, how are you going to do this? And he'd, you know, come up with his plan, and, and I'd say... Hey, what about this on the plan? You you might want to come in from the north instead of from the west. And he'd go, well. <laughs> and then I'd say, after a while, I that became a, a code word for, you're about to get choked. Yeah. <laughs> well. <laughs> but he was a total, he's an awesome guy. Check. Well. <laughs> Don't tell me your excuses. Next question. Jocko. Have had discipline equals freedom audio on repeat since its release. Check. And I love it. Question. If our greatest strength is our greatest weakness, then how is discipline, which is obviously your your strength, your greatest weakness? Uh, f- first of all, I don't even know what, I don't know if discipline would be my greatest strength. I don't know. I mean, I'm a disciplined person. Yeah. No doubt. But I think, it, I think that I think that one of the things that people would find interesting is that I'm not overly orderly. Mm-hmm. So if you think about those like psychological characteristics, one of them is extreme orderliness, which yeah. normally goes hand in hand with highly disciplined people. Yeah. You know those people that are, um, they're just ultra highly disciplined people but they have to have everything. They're, they're OCD. Yeah, they're yeah. OCD orderly, right? Yeah. And I, th- I'm not like that <clears throat> mm. about a lot of things. Mm. I am about some things, but like, it's pretty funny. Actually, my floor in my garage mm-hmm. where I work out is not is not clean, right? It's got salt stains on it from sweat. Salt, oh yeah. And it's dirty, right? And occasionally I'll get someone say, you should clean that floor. Or, hey, man, you should clean that floor, man. That's nasty. But it's totally functional, right? Mm-hmm. And my point is that I, I, don't, I don't freak out about it. It's functional. It, it doesn't bother me at all that it's right. not perfectly orderly. This also means that I don't mind when things don't go as planned, mm-hmm. right? So a lot yeah. of times you get people that are the high end of disciplined. Yeah. They're, too, they're too far. They're not balanced. Yeah. So now when things don't go the way, that, that they've planned things to go, they, they, they start to lose it a little bit. They can't deal with it. 
They want, they want to have everything in order all the time. And I'll tell you, that's not the way life works. That's certainly not the way combat works. But that's not the way life works. And I don't really mind that. I don't mind chaos. So I would say probably if, if you look at discipline as a strength, I don't think, I think that would be generally considered the weaknesses of, of being hyper-disciplined is mm. that you... You can't stand when things are not in order. Yeah. You can't stand like I missed a workout. This is you know you freak out completely. Like yeah. you know, okay, I don't like missing a workout, but I don't lose my mind over it. Yeah. Now, all that being said, I would say that I am a very much a creature of habit, and I do like to do the same things over and over again. I don't like to travel, even though I have to travel all the time. I don't like. To, I'd rather stay home. I pretty much eat the same food all the time and go to the same three or four restaurants all the time. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. I f- like to follow routine as much as I can. You know, it's even in jujitsu, I do the same basic movements all the time. I have the same, you know, I've talked about like a funnel, like mm. everywhere that you go with me, it's going right. to lead to where I want you to be because I'm yeah. going to use those same moves. I surf the same spots all the time. So I guess. I guess for me, the way that discipline is weakness or whatever for me is that it may, I think I'm, I'm, I could be fairly boring and predictable. Yeah. <laughs> for other people. For yeah. The other people. Yeah. Kind of thing. Like, huh. you, you know, yeah. people say, hey, you want to go try this thing? And I'm like, oh, no. Not really. <laughs> Not really. Yeah. Don't really want to. I think you're right about that, though. Yeah. Because I'm just the f- same thing. Even are I, you I the same way? Exact same way, bro. Same. Like I, I, I'm not gonna highly say, disciplined, Echo Charles. Well, I'm not highly disciplined. I mean, but like the same stuff, like over and over again. The it was funny. I go to. I eat you know weird? I don't even like new movies. Oh dang! Okay, we're you, not, you see we're what I'm not saying? The same. Like, oh, you know what? What? I, I, I haven't had time to watch movies for a long time. Yeah, but but when I used to watch movies, it'd be like, oh, okay, I'm gonna watch Big Lebowski again. Yeah, yeah, we'll have that kind too, I think. But yeah. Le- Big Lebowski is the kind of movie that okay, so movies are different. I'm not gonna go into the whole thing about this, but there's there's two types of different mo- <clears throat> two types of movies in this situation. There's movies that are like, oh, awesome, good storyline, maybe a great reveal at the end or twist or whatever, and it's like good good story. And then there's like the type of movie that's just a series of good parts where the story doesn't really matter that much. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's junk, but it's less about that. It's more about the, like the good parts. It's right. like, oh, this part and this part. That's how the big Lebowski is. Like it's just a series of really good parts. Yeah, and it's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. I think they're both awesome, but the, the ones Wait, that have- what was the other one? Just the storyline's awesome. Oh, like, oh okay. You yeah. know, like, um, I, don't know, I can't think of anything on the top of my head, but Big Lebowski is one of those. You know, like Napoleon Dynamite. Yeah, right? you, yeah. Like that's another one. It's just a bunch of yeah. good parts. Who cares about what happens at the end? In fact, you probably forget really. I mean, you remember what happens at the yeah, end, yeah. but as far as the storyline, you don't really care. But you'll watch it over and over True. because all the parts are f- funny or good or whatever. And then, like Point Break, for example. I know we talked about the that last time. The first Point Break. Yeah, yeah. That's a good, that's a series of great parts. Like that's <laughs> <laughs> Surfing part, the skydiving part, the you know, the, all the parts, they're just yeah. really fun. I mean, sure, the story is good. It's wow. cool. It's fine. We'll say that. But that's not the point. The point is like, you know. Anyway. Jack. Back to the point, though, is, oh, when we're talking about like being repetitive, like liking mm-hmm. the same thing yeah. over and over. So, boring, being boring. I'm boring. Yeah. Because I, okay, so I'm like that, right? Where I eat a lot of sushi all the time. And mm-hmm. there's a sushi <laughs> restaurant within walking distance of my house. Like it's like borderline. I yeah. drive, but yeah. I go there like n- not as much now. I probably go like maybe three times a week now. But there is a point where I was going five to six days a week <laughs> for real. And there'd be times where <laughs> I'd go more than right once there. in a day. Yeah. Dang. So of course they just love oh, yeah. us, me <clears throat> and and my brother goes too. So yeah, they just love me in there. Who's like, oh, again, again, we're just you know probably responsible for a significant portion of their revenue. <laughs> my wife, she's not like that. Oh, she likes the different. Yeah, she likes like variety and whatever. And so my wife will say, you know, well, let's say we're gonna go out for dinner. Yeah, let's try something different. Yeah, I said, okay, tell yeah. me where. <laughs> and and she knows I'm really not gonna like any. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we just go to Old Faithfuls. Yeah, yeah. So at least you have a few like different yeah, spots. Yeah, I, I have. I have two, and they're both sushi places. Mm. So it's like, Interesting. and it goes for like what we do too during the weekend it's like really repetitive yeah. my wife uses the word groundhog day plenty mm-hmm. like a lot too speaking of great movies 
another, yeah, another one. <laughs> great parts, a bunch of great parts. But really, who cares at the end? You know, like the story. What's that? What's that movie really about? That what's the story about that movie? You don't know. Yeah, I totally know. I've seen it a bunch like of times. What you got to be nice to the girl so the groundhog day stops. Like well, I don't know what the the yeah, moral of the yeah, story. There's, well, <laughs> it doesn't even make sense. It's not good, but it's a good movie. Anyway, so that was the point I was making with the movie thing. But um, but yeah. So there, my point is with this is that yeah, you will be boring because my wife thinks I'm boring in that way. Mm-hmm. Where it's like it's just the same old same old every single time. I'm like, bro, I love the same old same old. <laughs> She's like, I want to travel. I want to go on to this all inclusive thing or whatever. I'm like, well, let's just stay home. Yeah. Like, we this is like way better, you know. And yeah, so yeah, I think you're right. I think that might. Be. But so if you think discipline isn't your biggest strength, what is? What do you think your biggest strength is? Oh, I don't know. I don't think I have any real big strengths. You know what I think it is? I think it. It's arguable, maybe discipline. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. But you balance, know what I think? actually. Balance. Yep. No oh, man, you're imbalanced. Nope. You're pretty balanced. Yep. <clears throat> you know, I think it is. What? And you told it to me too. Oh. You're durable. Oh, in terms of physical, I think even mental too, though. That's the thing. Like you're, you're like a durable person. You know how like people like you, you've told me stories. Obviously, when I'm going to them, but you told me stories about someone who made like huge mistakes you know, with you and you like handle it and it doesn't seem like it like bothers you, mm. you know, like that kind of stuff, stuff that like, yeah, no, I do. I, well, and you know, to me, I guess that's, that's balanced to me. Yeah. But to me, balance is, I don't, I don't, it's, it's, it's also boring. Hmm. Right. Cause I don't go far in one direction, yeah, or yeah, far yeah. in the other direction. I don't get extreme about this or extreme about that. Mm-hmm. I just, I, I think that's what has, been good for me yeah was i never freaked out about stuff much yeah. much yeah some <laughs> stuff <laughs> yeah that yeah that makes sense next question what's your biggest strength my biggest strength yeah i'll tell you what i think your biggest strength is what? you're humble you're super humble yeah I think it helped. Just the other day, you were telling me you were the most humble guy Person in the world. In the world. <laughs> Nobody's more humble than me. <laughs> that was actually, that's a joke. Who's no, I saying know. that? It was I so, know, it was so funny, it though. Oh, that is pretty oh, funny. I forget who said that joke, but yeah. Yeah, maybe. I had, a, I I had one of the most egotistical persons that I've ever known. <laughs> like, I am not Straight kidding up. about this. Yeah. Straight up, tell me. I have no ego. I mean, it, it, was, <laughs> it was like... It was completely insane. Yeah, I couldn't believe that that this individual was saying it. I was, I was just thinking to myself, man, that's crazy. Ego is uh, here's the thing. I don't know who you're talking about specifically, but um, I will say this: where obviously I wasn't always. I don't, and this may even go along with the idea that you think that I'm humble. It's like I don't even know if if I'm humble or not because I know before I wasn't humble before at all oh. i thought the world like revolved around me not, not necessarily <laughs> not like in a bad way but just yeah, sort of, a, just just how That's yeah it's kind of like if i had certain feelings like they were just more important than what was kind of going on mm. and it wasn't like necessarily like like walking you know like a dick or nothing like that it was just that's kind of how i felt or whatever <clears throat> and um it was you know complete immaturity but at the same time when you when you kind of pointed out that humility is like a super important thing i was like okay how can i how can i i mean okay i'm gonna assume that's true because you know what you're talking about so what does that even mean and then what i realized is a big like a way to exemplify humility is to to i don't know the 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 ability to learn things from Mm. someone who might not necessarily be an expert for example you know like like you can learn stuff from a kid. You Someone can learn stuff the, from a blue belt. Yeah, you can yeah. Learn stuff you know, from a purple stuff. belt. You yeah. can learn stuff from a white belt. Yeah, so that kind of stuff. Not but someone with, <laughs> someone with a big ego will be like, hey, I'm a black belt, yeah, so yeah, for sure. what do you have to say to me? You know, you know that concept, that idea. Well, interestingly, in jiu-jitsu, you could take it to the extreme of where there was times where people thought you can't learn anything from wrestlers. You can't learn yeah. anything from judo. You can't learn anything from sambo. You you know, that's 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 crazy talk. Yeah. You know, and, and the good jiu-jitsu players take it, something from wrestling and take something from judo. Take yeah. a bunch from wrestling, a bunch from judo, yeah. a bunch from sambo. Yeah. And then create their own stuff and watch on YouTube somebody that does other stuff from a different academy. Yeah. A different school. Yeah. So it's almost like there's two different types of humility where, you know, how like someone who's really outwardly like um, 
you, actually you had this example where uh, like conor mcgregor for example mm-hmm. where out like to to hear him talk and stuff like that you'd be like oh this guy has a huge ego or whatever yeah. he's like, there's no humble there's no humility yeah. with him whatever but like he's learning all this stuff from like people you'd be like bro he's learning from and everyone. training hard yeah it's because so, he knows he's he's humble yeah so what is that you know like is there two kinds of humbleness in your humility I think they're kind of is, look, and even if we were to look at it, there's some just, level of showmanship with Connor, right? There's some level yeah. of selling fights with Connor. But even at the same time, like let's say that because there's such thing as people, probably pretty common, that people are legitimately like into themselves in that way. Coach like, Kavanaugh, we're gonna have Coach Kavanaugh on this podcast at some point. Yeah, yeah, because I've gone back and forth with him on social media. Yeah, he's, 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 he's and he's to say. yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, but 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 he ability, could answer that question. Very yeah. Well, you well know? about yeah. yeah, just in general or about Connor well McGregor? about about Connor. Yeah, about Connor. He knows Connor probably better than anybody. But you get people who are legitimately cocky outwardly, you know, kind of like, er, but but at the same time they can learn from. They have the humility to learn yeah. from everyone, kind of thing. Yeah, and you know what it is almost even. It might not even be necessarily specifically being able to learn from everyone. It's more about what you said long time ago. It's. It's like admitting to yourself that you don't know everything. Yes. And you don't necessarily know more than everyone at every single time. It's like you have to be humble enough to know that you don't know everything, so listen up kind of thing. That is the type of thing where even so I will catch myself. And I I used to catch myself doing that, let's say, w- once a day. Yeah. And then and then it was once a week. And then it's once a month, and 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 it's pretty. It's less now, but sometimes I'll I'll, I'll catch myself listening to someone, mm-hmm. and I'll catch myself thinking, "Oh, this guy doesn't know what he's talking." Yeah, about. you know what I mean. Yes. And as soon as I hear myself saying, "Wait a second, take a different perspective," yeah, because you what can you not not this guy doesn't know anything. Mm-hmm. It's what can you learn from this person? Yeah, that's the question. Yeah, yeah. What can you learn from him? You can learn something from him, even yeah. if he's. A white belt, even if he's inexperienced, even if he seems completely arrogant and crazy, yeah. even if you're learning how not to act, yeah, that's better than just saying, oh, this person, oh, I'm not going to listen to this person. I've got nothing to learn. No, you yeah. do. I do. So yeah. I, it's interesting as we talked about how you make excuses. You personally make excuses less now. I mm-hmm. personally make excuses. I might be a little ahead of you on that because I, I, I figured that out maybe a little bit earlier and I'm older than you. Sure. But- it's you know I used to probably make excuses once once a day yeah and then once every three days and then yeah. once a week and, and that comes in plenty of many forms too the whole making excuses because it doesn't necessarily only mean making excuses to others it's like to yourself oh for you sure know? for Man. sure that's the primary yeah that's the primary the easy one to overcome is making excuses yeah. to other people, other people yeah the hard one to overcome is making excuses <laughs> to yourself I know bro. Yeah, that's the hard one to overcome because it hurts more. Yeah, because the minute you say, "Well, you know, I didn't get the thing I wanted because yeah. of that all these person. external yeah. forces, the <laughs> all these uh, external forces," the minute yeah. that you start saying that is the minute that you stop working hard for that thing, yeah. or maneuvering for that thing, or adjusting for that thing, or getting up early and chasing that thing down. It becomes. An excuse, so an excuse. It becomes an excuse, like meaning for sure. You just excused yourself. You did. Indeed. You just excused yourself from that workout. Um, yeah, but I would say back to the humility thing. And I don't know. I'm just listening to you at this point, where maybe I am because I've always had had at least a little bit of that. Where mm. I'd be like, maybe this person right now, even though I hate what they're saying to me, what like they could be right. They could be yeah. right about me right now. And I think I always had that. I think that's why, you know, some people, they just, you talk to me, you know them or whatever. And you're like, the chance of this person changing how they are is very low. Oh, most you know, people. Like most, most people, people. Right. Most people try to change. That's kind of in my experience too. But life has to change. Them. Yeah. Something mm-hmm. either something really big yep. or something really small has to happen over and over and over mm-hmm. and over. Like a, just yes, in a different environment. Sure. Right. But I would say legitimately, and I'm trying to look at it as like honestly as possible where, me 10 years ago is like like if let's say i know someone i knew someone 10 years ago and i haven't seen them or heard from them or whatever in 10 years and they like hung out with me for a week they would be blown away they'd be like you're just way different you're like a whole different person <laughs> well, that's the same with me i mean so so this is funny there's a bar in san diego 
Sure. That I used to go to when I was back in the day, <laughs> back in the teens. Sure. And in we used to go, and I was, yes, and I was a wild. Yeah. I was a wild. Yeah. And there was a guy that was a, a DJ there. Sure. Yeah, and yeah. I didn't even know. I didn't recognize it. I was usually not in a state to even be paying attention to those sure. kind of things. Yeah. Anyways, to make a long story short, I decided I was going to put it in an officer package. And I put together the package and I went into the administrative office at SEAL Team One and I talked to the chief that was in there. Mm. And I said, Hey, how you doing, Chief? You know, I'm putting this package and I, I was just wanting you to take a look at it. You know, if there's anything you see I should add. And he looked at me, he goes, Oh, you're putting in a package, huh? And I said, Yeah. And he goes, Oh, that's I wouldn't expect that from right. you. It's surprising. And I was kind of why not? He goes, well, he goes, you know, I'm the I'm the DJ on <laughs> this bar on on these nights yeah. and I've been that for you know five years and I said I was not aware of that <laughs> and you know in his mind yeah he was thinking that's what he knew me as he didn't really know yeah. me because he's in the admin office he wouldn't really know me from anything else yeah. and that was a little bit of a wake-up call but that huh. that so my point is I want to. I, I, I should not. I should never come off as a saint. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like far you got from it. Yeah, out. Like, yeah, for sure, for sure, not at all. Yeah. And even you know, to this day, still working, still trying to figure things out. Yeah. But, but definitely, back in the day, I was an idiot. I had fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had fun, but I was did a lot of dumb stuff. Yeah, but you're. I mean, and and, and I I believe you hundred percent. Where you were probably a certain way back then and you know whatever it fit it was fun it was all this or whatever and but you legitimately changed a bunch or a big part of fundamentally who you are with being open to like critique and criticism and learning yeah. and whatever and i think yeah i think the biggest thing is i i had open eyes you know what I mean? Yeah. And as I moved into leadership position, I saw I saw how other people perceived me and I saw the importance of leadership. And yeah, I mean, you just you just have to change. And that's something that as a leader, you you see this all the time. What got you here isn't necessarily what's gonna get you there. Yeah. Right? And yeah. so if you have leaders that if they, they were aggressive young cowboy when they were out in the field, that's great. Yeah. But you can you you have to you, you don't have to stop that, but you have to put some reins on it. Yeah. You have to you have to rein it in a little bit. The more senior you get, yeah. the more you become accountable to a board. The more you become accountable to uh, being a publicly traded company. Those are things yeah. that are real. Yeah. And the more you become accountable to the actions, if you're in the military still, and what the way you're going to be seen, way the way your unit is going to be seen and perceived by other senior leaders. Those yeah. are real things. And if you don't grow up, you don't make the progress that you need to make. Yeah. And I was lucky enough to, to see that. You know, I had some great examples along the way, great leaders that I work for. Yeah. But it can be hard to see that. Yeah. And now that, that's a good like expression when you said I, I went in, I opened my eyes or I went in with open eyes. I, I don't even know how to describe it, but I just was aware of what was happening a little bit more than normal or a little bit yeah. enough to make the changes, I guess. Yeah. And that's the hard part right yeah. there. And I think it is because of, like I said, like your, your ego. And it's hard for me to even really say that because like, even when I say the word ego, it really like it, it registers as like this external, like, Oh, the guy walking around with his chest out and I don't know, his Mohawk, I don't know, whatever. It's like that. It's an external mm -hmm. expression, but it's not, it's like, it's like being able to kind of shed the, the blinders on self critique and so you know when someone tells you hey like you're you're kind of acting this way or you're kind of this way and to be able to be to figure to yourself that this person could be right first mm -hmm. and then be mad at the fact that they just insulted you second of course because that's gonna be part of it I understand but most times for I think most people and me included sometimes where the fact that you step to me like that impacts me more than what you're actually saying hmm. you know what i mean but if you don't have the the ego in the way that you describe it you'll you'll hear what they're saying first and then decide yeah. whether or not to be mad at it 
You, you know what else is weird too is like as I talk about this stuff, like, like when I talk about detachment now, mm-hmm. I used to t- I used to mm-hmm. not know that word mm-hmm. when I would tell guys to do it. This is even you know f- not that long ago, you know. But I was still mm-hmm. in the teams, sure. but it took me a while in the teams while I was trying to tell guys that, mm-hmm. but I, I didn't figure out the words yet. <laughs> you know oh, what I mean? Gotcha. Yeah. And that's just one example. Right. Um, th- there's a bunch of examples like that where I was trying to convey them. I would convey the message, right. but I didn't just have like a concise way to do it or a clear way to do it, but I was right. still conveying the same message. Right, right. And maybe, it, and that's another thing that happens is as you get older and you get more experienced, you understand the message yourself better. Just like when you teach jujitsu or yeah. you teach anything, the more you teach it, the better you understand it. Yeah, yeah. And so as I taught things, I understood it better. Yeah. And so that's one thing that I think helps out a lot. And this is why it's an exa- a, an answer for me on so many different things with leadership. People say, well, what do I do with this young person that doesn't listen? Or what do I do with this person that isn't reaching their potential? I was like, well, put them in charge of stuff. Hmm. Cause that's what, that's what I think helped me a lot was even in my first platoon, when I was the youngest guy and I was the most junior guy in my first platoon, I was the, I was the, the head radio man, mm-hmm. which meant I was responsible for stuff, which meant I sat through the briefs and I had to help with the planning. And I had to do like stuff that was outside my realm of experience mm-hmm. and I had to step up and do it. Mm-hmm. And it seems like a little thing right now. But I'll tell you what, when you're 19 years old and you're in charge of the communications for some training exercise, bro, and you don't know what the hell you're doing, you yeah. step up and figure that stuff out. Yeah. And that's that's very, very impactful. So that's what you do with your junior leaders that you want to have them step up and lead. You put them in charge of things. Yeah. You put them, and that was very lucky that I had leaders that I worked for that did that. And I've yeah. talked about them before. I mean, I had leaders that, that put myself and the other junior guys and platoons in charge of things. Yeah. Not just not just saying, but actually putting us in charge of things. And that that's a quick way to grow a leader. So I was very lucky that I had that. Mm-hmm. And I think that was one of the things that helped me to see the light, right? Was being put in charge of things even at a young younger age. When do you think like how you, how you just talk about detaching, right? Where you were trying to convey that message before you even called it detaching or yeah. whatever. When did you understand the importance of I've told the story before in here. So I was, I was doing oil rigs training right. and we came up on a platform out of an oil rig. They're, they're different platforms or different yeah. levels, I should say. Yeah. And we came up on this one platform. I was, I think this was, this was in my, I'm trying to think it was my first or second platoon. I'm pretty sure it was my second platoon. And as we came up on this, this level, it was, it was a little confusing Mm -hmm. and the whole platoon gets online and no one does anything. And I, I, I basically stood there for a second and then I kind of stepped back off the line a bit Mm -hmm. and I looked around and I said, okay, I I see what we should do. And I actually said, hold left, clear right, or whatever this little call was. And everyone did it. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I understood that was because I stepped back like a foot. And yeah. looked around, and that's all you. That's what, and and I realized right then. Oh, if I'm not staring down my gun, if I take a step back, if I look yeah. around, if I detach, I didn't use that word because I didn't know that word. Right, right. But I said, oh, if you just step back and you high port your gun and you look around, you're gonna know way more than anybody else that's staring down their gun. And that right there changed my world. It really did. It changed my world. And, and at the time, I didn't think that changed my world. I just said, oh, cool. You know what? Yeah, when when people, yeah, when people are are frozen, take a step back, look around, and, and make a call okay that's cool that's what i started doing i didn't think it was a big deal at the time i didn't think it was a big deal until i was in an instructor position and i would see everyone staring down their gun and no one making a decision and all i'd have to do is tell someone hey take a step back with me right here one foot back off the firing line and look around and they'd go okay we can go to this berm right here and we'll be out okay yeah Yeah. that's right then i started to realize how important it was and i started to put uh, you know words around it and Mm. put put messaging around it that it was important and there's and every lesson that i talk about was all kind of learned in that method yeah all of it was kind of learned by being put in situations where i had to figure something out or something occurred or or i and that's the same thing with my life i got put in some situation i said okay you know what and what what i think might be kind of key about that particular idea of detaching is is when you can detach in life, 
right? It gives you this incredible ability to see yourself. And I think yeah. that if we go down to the core of, of myself improving as a leader and continuing to try and improve as a leader, it's because if you can detach and see yourself, because that's the same exact thing. Like I, I, I mentioned this earlier. I said, you know, I kind of saw myself and saw how other guys were seeing me. Well, that you've got to detach from, in order yeah. to see how other people are seeing you, you've got to be able to detach a little bit and understand it. And so that ability to step back and see myself from other people's, to, to see myself in situations and see how other people were interacting with me was very, very helpful. Now this does not mean that I was able to just correct course overnight and yeah. I don't want to make that you know anyone think that yeah. and I did dumb stuff when I was a when I was a assistant platoon commander and I did dumb stuff when I was a platoon commander and I did dumb stuff when I was a task unit commander and I did dumb stuff when I was a training commander and I do I'm going to do something dumb tomorrow watch me yeah but I think I will recognize it most of the time I'll look at it and say mm, you know what that was dumb yeah and don't do that again, or here's how you can avoid it. And I think that's what will help people. If people can can adapt that little skill of stepping back off the off the line yeah. and taking a look around, taking a look at yourself, look at how you're being perceived. What else is important is is how to actually think about how Echo is perceiving me. Right, because if I'm in my own head, I can't, I can never see how you're seeing me. Yeah. But sometimes, if you're acting, look, the first thing I do when someone's acting weird to me, or I don't <laughs> understand why someone's acting a certain way, is I put myself in their shoes. Yeah. It's hard to do that, and if you, yes. you if you don't do that, you don't make real. You, you can't understand them. Yeah. So if if my boss is doing something crazy to me, and all I do is get pissed at them for doing something crazy, yeah. well, that's we've just cre created an antagonistic relationship and now things are going sideways and it's not good. Yeah. If my boss is doing something crazy to me and I say, wait a second, why is he doing this? Let me think about yeah. what he's seeing. Oh, he's seeing Jocko, the caveman looking guy that wants to go out and he seems crazy and okay, mm -hmm. I need to, I need to correct that. I need yeah. to correct that thing. I need to let him see that I'm thinking about the big picture and that I understand the strategy. Okay, let me make those adjustments. Yeah. As opposed to he's stupid. He doesn't yeah. get it. Yeah. Screw him. No. Yeah. Detach. Detach. Check other people's perspectives. You, and that's a big key right there where you were like, you said, <clears throat> you know, the, the moment you kind of maybe realized the, the importance, the significance of detaching, right? Mm -hmm. the, the oil rig campaign. And then- <laughs> It wasn't a campaign, it was a training op. <laughs> so it's not that big of a deal. To me, that's a campaign. The, and then how you understood at whatever point that that applies to life. Because, mm -hmm. because I, oh man, that's, I'd say those two things. Understanding that you don't know everything. Mm-hmm. And being able to detach, which is borderline impossible, by the way, under most <laughs> circumstances. Yeah. And, when, and as far as applying it to life, like, because like even in the military, it's like, a, that's a very specific environment, military, like mm. unlike most environments, seemingly. Like if you come, you know, like I was talking about, like, well, I don't know, going to the post office or going to the grocery store, dealing with my wife or something like that. But the, like when you go deep enough, detaching is going to serve the exact same yes. significance. Good in all so, situations. You know, your, your wife comes home, you know, pissed because I don't know, whatever. whatever, you know, how you said the first reaction, what you feel like doing, which you, not you, but which one may typically do is react accordingly according to how i feel about this what you're saying to me you shouldn't be saying this stuff to me i didn't do anything to yep. you why are you doing this to me you know they're only dishes or whatever escalate you know? escalate escalate yeah. escalate but here's the thing <laughs> that's, that's what's what happening happens. That yeah. happens all that's the not what you're thinking you're just thinking hey this isn't fair this is wrong what you're doing to me so i'm gonna you know express yeah. that or whatever but that's because you're not Detached. detached like you just and when you're able to do it again borderline impossible but when do you, you are find able it borderline to, impossible have you made progress in that arena hugely no here's here's so why it's I not say borderline, borderline impossible. impossible no it's not that's an expression okay. like it's it's totally it can be hard. impossible it's borderline impossible i say it's borderline impossible because that's the last thing you feel like doing yeah so if you operate in your life which is natural by the way with how you feel you know like i'm just gonna express on myself you know what it's like it's like this 
um, it, it, it's like you're doing something and you have to do something completely different, yeah. right? Just yeah. imagine that you're walking down the road and now all of a sudden you're walking down the road, maybe you're even jogging, you're jogging down the road, now all of a sudden in a split second, you've got to like go read a book like right at that moment in time while you're running. It's like that radical of a change. Like it's, yeah. it's something totally, that's what it feels like when you detach from the current situation, you're in this, you're in this thing, you're yeah. in this thing and you have to completely go and do something completely different. That's yeah. what it feels. It feels like that radical of yeah. a thing when you, when you really do it yeah. and when you do it right, like when you're in a, in a, let's say an argument with someone, he, he did a argument. heated argument. Yeah. It feels like, you're going from running a, a thousand miles an hour to uh, to like putting your face in the snow and reciting the alphabet backwards. Like that's <laughs> yeah, how yeah. it's just yeah. totally different. Yeah. And so that you know that's why and people are going to ask and they've asked this before. Well, how do you detach? And the, well, the, the biggest thing I think you have to do is you have to figure out what your red flags are. What are the things that show you that you're too engulfed in the situation and then recognize those things and then go put your face in the snow and start reciting the alphabet backwards because yeah, yeah. that's what it feels like to detach. Yeah. But if you think about the advantage that you have and and I know you're a football player, I'm not, but you, you know you can watch everybody that's watching the football game on yeah. TV can yeah. see every mistake that's being made as it's happening and everyone else on the field is they're trying to they can't compensate yeah. for them fast enough. Yeah. So they're like, in the game. Yeah, they and usually it's on the quarterback by the way. When that guy was wide open, why did he yeah. throw it to that guy? Yeah. You know, yeah, exactly. Exactly 100%. So you have that advantage if you can do that. Yeah, if you can manage to do that in like another cool thing about the situation is yeah, I say borderline impossible, but the more you can actually pull through and do it the more you can do that the easier it becomes and when it becomes like habit and really all it is and you can do weird like meta which i'm kind of a fan of doing little metaphors with yourself you know so if it's like you ever watch those movies no <laughs> <laughs> where, where the movie's going on and then the the person the what do you call him the protagonist like it's almost like he pauses the movie and everyone in the movie pauses oh, except yeah, yeah, him, yeah. and then he starts, yeah, to explain. starts explaining what's yeah. going on. That so is it. You, so it's like you do that yep. to yourself, though. Yep. So yourself is odd. And so you go, boom, wife comes home, pissed. You didn't, I don't know, clean up the dogs, whatever. Or I don't know, whatever. You didn't mow the lawn. How about that? She's pissed, right? You can easily mow the lawn tonight. You can easily mow the lawn tomorrow, whenever, right? But she's pissed, right? You don't think so. So what you do is right when you feel yourself or right when you get her yelling at you, boom, pause the movie. What do we have here? What mm -hmm. do we have here? We have myself, we have wife, she's mad at something. Does it make sense? What would make, you know, it's like, yeah. and then you just detach at that doesn't point. doesn't matter that if it doesn't can, make sense. Yeah. Well, how are we going to solve the you, problem? You can easily how are we make sense of it. So, like, you know how you said, like, the, the football game. When you, yeah. If you can pause the movie at that, po at that point, yeah. step back, you will easily make yeah. sense of it. Because you'll easily. be like, oh, guess what? My wife, I haven't been home for four days. Yeah. I left a bunch of laundry out. Yeah. The baby was diaper was dirty and I forgot to yeah. throw it away. I'm yeah. I'm okay. I see where she's, she's not mad about the lawn specifically. There's right. a bunch of things I did wrong. Yeah. And so you say, Hey, you know what? I totally should have mowed the lawn. And by the way, mm -hmm. the diapers <laughs> that was that was completely out of hand. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. and you diffuse and you de escalate the situation. You're detached and that's how you that's how you roll. Yeah. That's how you, you, you make it, it through it. And here's a little side tip on that situation the lawn the diapers or whatever it's not that sh that the grass is long and she wants it short and the fact that it's long is making her mad that's not the situation the situation is she said something she thought that that meant something that she said something she thought it meant something to you when it came time to prove whether or not that meant something to you you proved it didn't <laughs> that's what you're dealing that's what you guys are dealing with and that's easy to figure out yep. when, you, when you detach it's hard that's to what figure I've figured out. out. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, hard in to the, figure in, out when you're in the heat of the moment. Yeah, when you're in the game, it's hard to see who's open and who's not. Yeah. Some of the time, most of the time, for sure, all of the time. In my case, all right. <laughs> next question. Next question. I think this question is a good, a good lead. That last answer was a good lead into this next question. Yeah. How do you think young Jocko would have performed under Commander Willink? <laughs> oh, young Jocko under old Jocko. Yeah, you see, that reaction that you just had yeah, yeah. is what I expected because it seems like it should be like a really interesting question yeah, yeah, with yeah, like yeah. a really interesting answer, but it actually isn't that interesting, to be to be quite honest with you. If young Jocko was working for old Jocko, it would have been good to go. 
I would have liked me mm. as a young guy and as a young guy I would have liked me as a boss. I was a young hard worker with a good attitude and sometimes I got a little bit wild as I as I mentioned a little bit earlier, but I could have been tightened up by the right leader mm. and I wasn't like I wasn't I wasn't um it wasn't ever interfering with work and oh your wild shit yeah, yeah my wild my yeah. wildness you know we were sure. getting wild we were young young guys with a fistful of money and just <laughs> oh, yeah. being young guys in the dirt and so we were just getting after it and you know guys but but we weren't like causing major trouble right yeah. we weren't getting yeah. arrested much yeah we weren't getting in fights all the time you know we were causing some problems but it was n- nothing major so we'd have been tightened up and we got tightened up sometimes but it would have been no factor and as a young guy um you know i, I think i would have i would have liked working for me because i would, I would have looked at myself and been like oh that guy's fired up he wants to get after it and that would have been cool with me so so again i don't think it's I don't think it's like a, a. It sounds like a really interesting question, but it's not really that interesting. And the cool thing is, there's a lot of young team guys that are like I was when I was a young team guy. Yeah. And so, so I was like, I was looked at old young team guys like, oh yeah, I remember when I was like that. Good for yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. Hey, good for him. He's fired up. Would there be any issues though? You know, like what? As young Jocko, who do you think, or not who, but what do you think would be your major struggle? You know any even with my with jocko, jocko the boss yeah yeah no nah. no we would have been cool huh we would have been cool yeah yeah and, and the fact of the matter is i mean like 95 percent of the young buck team guys that worked for me yeah <laughs> i love those guys <laughs> yeah, yeah you know they were awesome and no issues yeah so you're you were like you're essentially on the path then Really, you know, with some loose ends for sure. Oh yeah, from like loose ends for path. sure. Yeah, it was on the path. Yeah, and in in you know my my the guys that I got went to buds with that showed up at Seal Team One back in the day. Well, I would, sure. Old Jocko would have loved all those guys. Yeah, yeah. they were all fired up. I was nothing special. I don't. I'm not trying to say I was special because I wasn't. There's was guys that were way better than me. And yeah. you know that's to go back to your question earlier when I described myself like as my good quality being durable. Mm. The reason I say that is because like there's guys that were better at me than that just about everything, yeah. like faster than me, stronger than me, better shots than me, whatever. Yeah. I was pretty durable though. Like yeah. I was pretty, I was good at being average at a lot of different things. Yeah. <laughs> so I was a strong average in a lot of different things, which is yeah. good. And I was durable. Like I could, I could take some abuse, yeah. mental and physical abuse, which is yeah. which is a cool quality to have, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Very much so. Yeah. You're like a tank that just can't, you know. How you, yeah, like and again, this. I'm not trying to. I'm no Superman, but I'm durable. You know that that makes sense. You know the you know like the the Toyota Hilux. Do you know what the Toyota Hilux is? <laughs> no, <laughs> anyways, it's a it's a Toyota truck. They have them overseas. They're diesel, mm. and they're really really durable. Mm. Really, there's a there's a show from England. My wife's from England. There's a show in England. It's called Top Gear. My son watches the show Top Gear. They tried to destroy a, to- a Toyota Hilux. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they were no, doing no. like just crazy things <laughs> yeah, to it. Yeah. It's a really durable. Yeah. It's not the fastest. It's not the strongest. Yeah. You know, you know, but it's durable. It's Durable's can, a good quality to have. Just can take crap. I got asked the other day, you know, so it's like, hey, you should do Olympic lifting. I'm like, bro, I'm not even in the ballpark to, you know, compete with oh, Olympic. Compete? Yeah. Olympic lifting. I mean, it's just crazy talk. Crazy yeah, talk. Man. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's anything, man. You start competing, you better Yo, buckle yeah, up right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Crazy talk. Check. Crazy talk. So yeah, young, young, young Buck Jocko. He would have had a good time, and old Jocko. Like I said, yeah. man, there's there's a ton of young team guys that yeah. are fired up. I was I was out with some young team. I was out at, with some team guys. Yeah. And there were some young t- young team guys there, and some of these young team guys were fired up. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. I'm like, I'm, yeah, you know what? You know, people say like, oh, millennials and this and then, you know, America's getting weak. I'm like, I, I go hang out with some of those guys. Yeah. They're 20 years old. I'm like, you know what? We're good to go. Yeah, yeah. We're good to go. We got some yeah. guys that are beasts. Solid. Yeah. 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 Beyond solid. Freaking awesome. Yeah, my my two friends that are in the Jeremy and Cake Nuts, think, talking to them now, like the maturity level is just really... Like really impressive maturity level, especially for both of them. 
But at the same time, thinking back on them and how they kind of, when they started, when they're like, yeah, we're going to the SEAL teams, all this stuff. Considering that and then considering where they are now, it makes it, it seems oh, yeah. the same to me. Where the older them wouldn't have a problem no, really with no, younger them. The, it's like they guys. were on the path oh, for sure. Oh, they were on the path for sure. Those yeah. are the kind of guys I'm talking about. Like yeah. those guys, well, I would love to have those guys working for me when yeah. I was a when I was a commander. And I would love to have those guys as my chief when I was a young guy. Was, yeah. yeah, no, no factor. Yeah. So like I said, I think it, people thought that sounded like an interesting yeah, question, but like it actually wasn't, yeah. unfortunately. Like you're committing all these question. violations. Yeah, yeah. You know, like you I was just to, all crazy. Uh, yeah. I just did some crazy stuff. What about socially, though? Not, not socially, but what do you say? Like in like outside of the military, you know? Yeah, bro. I mean, I was a young kid. Yeah, but the, And I'm as saying, an older guy, you like, look at the young kids and you go, yeah, you know what? He's young. Yeah. He's getting after it. Yeah, God yeah. bless him. Bless rock and roll. I got to let me keep him out of trouble. Yeah. That's all good. Yeah, All good. I think I might have some problems with myself with Young Echo. Oh, because Young Echo you? wasn't on the path yet. No, I don't, no, yeah, there was no path. I didn't even see a path, really. <laughs> I don't know. Check. Maybe. All right, next question. What advice would Jocko give his 17 year old self regarding school, social relationships, parents? Peer pressure, etc. cetera. Yeah, so this that, is like the actual Jocko podcast tonight. Is <laughs> like yeah, all these questions are about Jocko. Yeah. Actually, that's kind of what I was asking, like outside of the military. You yeah. Know? You know, if I was going to tell myself something, here's a couple things that, you know, I would tell myself to detach. I'd tell, tell myself to learn that. Mm-hmm. I would tell myself that that girl isn't the whole world. Yeah. And those friends aren't the last friends you're ever going to have. And the party isn't going to be the best party of all time. And, all those things that you think, and this is what we talked about earlier, all those things that you think are a huge deal when yeah. you're young, they're not a big deal. And I know that's kind of messed up, but it's true, man. It's yeah. true. The yeah. things that you think are a big deal when you're 17 years old yeah. are not that big of a deal. And it's really hard to convince yeah. someone that's 17 years old yeah. of that, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. They also, also what they don't recognize is things that are a big deal they don't recognize, they think they're a little deal. Right. So they, they're doing st- stupid things, right? Yeah. Whether it's drinking and driving, whether, I mean, kids still drink and drive now. Like, yeah. Yeah, how dumb is that? Yeah, seems crazy. And just, so people don't think, you know, nowadays we've talked about social media already, too, but people post stuff on social media and you go, man, <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with you? I know. Yeah. And I guess, I know. you know, I've heard now, you know, we work with a lot of different companies. When you apply for a job, they go and look at your social media yeah. and see what kind of an idiot you yeah. might be. Good. That's a good move, by the no, way. No, it's a great move. Yeah. It's a great move. So, um, yeah, just just recognize that some of the little things Mm-hmm. are actually big and some of the big things are actually little and I'd square those things away. And the I've said this before, when you're young, you've got to realize that how you act now is directly related to your future success, to your yeah. future happiness, to your future financial situation, to everything. So yeah. so it's hard to make that connection, right? When yeah. we're young. Impossible. <laughs> it might be impossible. Yeah, yeah. Some kids get it though. I'm telling you, some kids get it. I think they're just No, some kids get it. Some of my oldest daughter's friends, they get it. Like they're on track. Yeah. They're on track. They're, they're, they're like, hey, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Yeah. They're, they're on track, they're 16 years old, yeah. they're studying for the SATs, they're taking the AP classes, yeah. my daughter included. Like they're on track to make stuff happen. Yeah, but I think, and I'm not saying this is the case, but this is probably the case in one way or another. I could be wrong, I understand. But, okay, so and we talked about this before, you know that part of your brain that understands all that that you're talking about? Yeah, it's isn't not even there. developed. It's not yet, developed. Yeah. So this is, uh, you know, and this is uh, from what I understand, how you kind of influence people. You just put them on a routine. Kind of like, okay, so is the difference between yeah, understanding I'm, I'm, like what I'm doing now and having a, a tangible no, I'm access. Te- I, I, I know where you're going with this. And you're, you, I, I believe that there are definitely some kids like that that are just, they're just like, hey, okay, I'm supposed to get good grades. I'm going to get good grades. Right, I'm supposed right. to get, they, yes. they're on that track. I know for a fact kids that are like, no, I am going to do this, 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 and it's going to lead me here. Actually, you know what? You're right. Because this guy, Blake, you know, remember Blake? I used to do videos for. Yeah. Um, so he, we did like a thing where it was, I think it was like a QA and a or something, something like that. And he was, he was talking about that where in elementary school, he remembers feeling like if, if I don't have perfect attendance and have perfect straight A's, I won't 
pass this not pass but i won't like be the the perfect guy or whatever and he said that he would um he would like create like this track to his whole future and his mm-hmm. life would be ruined yeah. that's how he felt there you go. i was like whoa bro i'm living life literally minute to minute <laughs> in third grade you know? yeah. it would be like the reason i wanted to do my homework and get good grades is so i wouldn't get in trouble straight, yeah, straight up. up it was yeah. not to yeah. get into college it was sure. none of that stuff for sure and then that's he, the way most kids are in yeah. my opinion most kids are hey i don't want to get in trouble some immediate repercussions myself yeah. included yeah hey i gotta pass this so i can go to the next grade yeah yeah it was all <laughs> you know immediate what I mean? stuff yeah. yeah or i don't want to be the guy in class who didn't do his homework you know kind of thing yeah it was like it was all immediate I ever felt that stuff. way <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but yeah uh, i guess so yeah i guess so that's that's me trying to i gotta step outside of myself on that one and i guess the final thing obviously i'd tell myself discipline equals freedom which is basically yeah. what we're saying. Yeah. So get this one in how you live your life. Yeah. That, and that, I, I think the biggest one there is to, to, whether they totally understand it or not, say like what you're doing right, right now is the important things in life. The things that you think are important, <laughs> are, not important. are not important. And then things that aren't, uh, that you think are not import- important are important. So it's yes. kind of like a, like an iceberg. You know how the old, you know, the people metaphor. are going to go nuts over that little statement. You know why? Because people really like the way you say important. <laughs> <laughs> you just said it eight times. Uh, yeah, well, it's gonna it be is. a flurry of glory <laughs> and and rainbows, a bunch of emojis. And rainbows. Yeah. All right. Well, hey. Yes, there you go. I agree with you. So, like the iceberg thing, you know, you know the iceberg metaphor where it's like people only see the top of the iceberg, right. but below that is like yeah. this huge iceberg. So that's what that's what important things are in life, right? So you you think it's just this little small little iceberg, but when you think of the whole scope of life, which you have no access to, by the way, as a kid. <laughs> It's that whole iceberg, you know? So if you're not focusing on that important part of the iceberg, well, I guess an iceberg situation is not that important, but well, yeah, think of another metaphor. But <laughs> It'll sink your ship. Yeah, yeah, you know, and then, like in that kind of situation. Um, but And then at the same time, the things that aren't really important, meaning they don't have an iceberg under there, they're just little floaty things. Yeah. You think that's so important, that yeah. thing's going to melt or get crowded or whatever, you know? Not going to sink you. No, it's not going to sink you. It's just going to kind of, it's fleeting. Check. Hey, uh, one thing before we closed out tonight, because I think that's good for questions. Uh, I want to hit a couple quick, Tim Ferriss' new book. I want to hit a couple quick things from it. Tribe of Mentors is what it's called. And um, there's a lot of good info in it. And it's written in really short little sections, if you didn't know this yet. I mean, you can read them in like five or 10 minutes. And what he did in this book is he took and asked the same, I think it's 10 or 11 questions to all these different, I would say random, but they're not random because they're all kind of successful in whatever realm they're going to be successful in because I guess successful is a very open term, right? Whatever realm they're in, they're successful. There's all kinds of people in here. And I, I just, I read like the first couple 150 pages or so and I just wanted to pull out a couple of the Couple of ones that I thought were pretty cool That I thought people could take a little something away from and I was like Tim. Can I read a couple of these things? He's like, yeah, go ahead (laughs) (laughs) Whatever (laughs) Hopefully he doesn't sue me Uh, Anyways, so here we go. The first one is a little section from some excerpts and I'm not reading the whole Uh, like everything in each person's section, but just some of the highlights. Stephen Pressfield. The guy's an author. He's in the Marine Corps. You know who Stephen Pressfield is? Sure, I do. Yeah, he wrote The Art of War. He wrote The Legend of Bagger Vance. That's a movie. The War of Art. Yeah, sorry. He wrote The War of Art, yeah, which is obviously a a play on words for for the art of war. And the war of art is like how to be creative and how to overcome yeah. those things and overcome the resistance and all that. Yes, yes, there is. And uh, Joe Rogan actually told me he used to have a stack of those books and you just give them to people yeah. that came to that, uh, meet him. Yeah, that's why yeah. I read it. Joe Rogan. Oh, there you go. And oh, he also wrote Gates of Fire, mm-hmm. which is a freaking awesome book, actually. And it's about the Spartans, the Battle of Thermopylae. And they actually teach Gates of Fire like at the basic school for the Marine Corps and at the Naval Academy, at least I've heard that they've teach it. So that's mm-hmm. pretty, that's pretty awesome. Anyways, here's a question 
for Stephen Pressfield. The question is, what advice would you give to a smart, driven college student about to enter the real world? What advice should they ignore? Here's what he said. I'm probably hopelessly out of date, but my advice is get real world experience. Be a cowboy. Drive a truck. Join the Marine Corps. Get out of the hyper competitive life hack frame of mind. I'm 74. Believe me, you've got all the time in the world. You've got 10 lifetimes ahead of you. Don't worry about your friends beating you or getting somewhere ahead of you. Get out and get into the real dirt world and start failing. Why do I say that? Because the goal is to connect with your own self, your own soul. Adversity. Everybody spends their life trying to avoid it. Me too. But the best things that ever happened to me came during the times when the shit hit the fan and I had nothing and nobody to help me. Who are you really? What do you really want? Get out there and fail and find out. Very interesting. Pretty (laughs) hard. It's funny, I was talking to Jade last night. (laughs) Literally last night, Mm -hmm. he told me the same thing. Get out there and fail? What what part? That That thing. It's like, you know. Live? So me, when I step outside of my comfort zone, I take one tiny step. And here's the thing. (laughs) He told you to jump? He told me to, yeah, like take a bigger jump kind of thing. He didn't tell me to do it. He just recommended it. Because, what you know, my whole, and this is probably half justification, by the way. I have a comfort zone. Mm -hmm. I'll take one tiny step and then I'll. I'll, I'll take the you know when you step outside you, you get burned or whatever you yeah. get you know the whatever and then you grow from it that's what what happens that's the whole idea right so i take a tiny step then i take the tiny hit and then i get the tiny growth but i, I try to do it all mm. the time all the time all the time but it's still safe man that's still safe because that's just like one pinky outside the comfort zone that's what he was saying he was like you like you gotta step outside because just the fact that you can endure a big fail Mm-hmm. You know, he's saying go out there and fail, right? It's yeah. field. So if you can endure like a big fail or two big fails or major fails, now you have the ability to endure major failure, you know, sure. that kind of thing. That's That was his whole thing. I was like, yeah, that makes sense. I didn't tell him that at the time. I was just <laughs> like, oh, man, I'm doing it perfectly. <laughs> Chuck, uh, next question for Stephen Pressfield. When you feel overwhelmed or unfocused, what do you do? And here's his answer. I have a friend at the gym who knew Jack LaLanne. Google him if the name is unfamiliar. Jack used to say, it's okay to take a day off from working out, but on that day, you're not allowed to eat. (laughs) (laughs) That's the short way of saying you're not really allowed to get unfocused. Take a vacation, gather yourself, but know that the only reason you're here on this planet is to follow your star and do what the muse tells you. It's amazing how a good day's work will get you right back to feeling like yourself. That's good info right there. Hmm. When I realize this, um, it's so easy to go down the downward spiral Mm -hmm. of eat bad food, feel bad, not get good workouts, sleep late, sleep like crap. And, And then what do you do when you feel like crap? You want to feel better as soon as possible, so you do some immediate gratification. Right. Stuff. You you go, oh, you know what? I don't feel like working out, so I'm not going to work out. Yeah. And then you say, you know what? I don't feel good. And the reason you don't feel good is because you didn't work out. <laughs> and so now what you do is you're yeah. like, well, you know what's going to make me feel better? A donut. And a beer. And a beer. Mm. And so you get the donut and the beer. And then now you really don't feel like working out. Yeah. So that's the downward spiral. Yep. Yeah. Break the spiral. Break it. Yeah. Break. What did you call it the other day when Jordan Peterson was on? Break the loop. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's the same thing. You got to break the loop, and that's what he's talking about. When you're feeling like crap, get after it. Yeah. That's yeah. that's what that's that's how I translate it, yeah. and it makes you feel better, and it gets you right back on the path. Yeah. And that's why actually fasting is a good thing. Yeah. Fasting is a good way to get yourself re reacquainted with the path real quick. <laughs> If you fill your body with a bunch of junk, yeah. it makes you not want to perform. It makes you not want to yeah. work out. It makes you not want to work. Yeah. When you're clean, you feel good. Yeah. So hit a fast 24 hours. You know, yeah. I, okay. yeah. Rock and roll. Yeah. 
And I like that. You want to take a day off? That's cool. <laughs> no eating. <laughs> How legit is that? It's real legit. Yeah, yeah. It's real legit. Because now, guess what? At lunchtime, you're like, man, I just want to eat something cool. Go bang yeah, all the go workout, work out, and that. then you can get yeah. your grub on. <laughs> Makes sense. Makes or, sense. Or you can just work out and still not eat. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Getting into the next cat here. This guy's name is Jersey Gregorick. And this guy emigrated from Poland to the United States as a political refugee with his wife in 1986. And he won, subsequently won four world weightlifting championships and established one world record. Founded the UCLA weightlifting team. And, and by the way, uh, this guy's been on, this guy's been on Tim's podcast as well. This guy, Jersey. Also, writer, write poem, wrote poems, and had award-winning poems. But this is kind of a cool little statement that he wrote in here. Uh, he kind of goes on a little bit of a tangent. The, this isn't related to the question, but I'm going to jump into it. He says, five years ago, I decided to eliminate my reactive behavior to irritations. But at first, none of my tricks worked. I placed philosophical and inspirational quotes on my iPhone wallpaper and wrote in my journal, but the proverbs always lost their effectiveness over time. Then one day, I told one of my clients who blamed her husband for everything to take 100% responsibility for her part in the interactions. This way, I said, you will be free of trying to control him and you will be able to find constructive solutions in your relationship. When she left, I realized that the same advice could help me as well. Taking 100% personal responsibility would help me to stop blaming or complaining and achieve a sense of flow. It would also give me the clarity in any conversation to locate the right words to help a person accept a hard choice. So he's talking about extreme ownership. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about that, we're in taking, a, taking extreme ownership in a relationship with another human being. Mm -hmm. Don't blame them. Figure out how you're going to solve the problem yourself. You know what this reminded me of was when Captain Plum was on and he was had a cellmate and what they, do you remember Captain Plum? And he, we touched on it, but he was saying that if their cellmate was annoying them, because mm. believe, you know, they're, they're living with one other or two other or three other people for mm. months on end in a little freaking Hanoi Hilton cell. Mm -hmm. And he said, if that person, because you can imagine how you get on each other's nerves. And yeah. they all took the attitude that if they allowed themselves, if if Echo was getting on my nerves, it wasn't Echo's fault, it was my fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My fault. Yeah. And that's what he's talking about here. Yeah. And then you can actually fix it. Mm -hmm. the, the next question that Jersey answered is this one. If you could have a gigantic billboard anywhere with anything on it, what would it say? And why? And here we go. Here's what his answer was. Hard choices, easy life, easy choices, hard life. Nothing truly meaningful or lasting has ever been created in a short period of time. If you learn the story behind any great success, you realize how many years went by and how many hard choices were made to achieve it. Reaching for more is not only an act of ambition, it also, becomes, it also comes from passion and love. Nothing is achieved because of easy choices. I believe that people can endure any hardship if it is sensible and constructive. Hard choices means never retiring because the brain has to be engaged in finding new solutions in the moment, not just remembering old formulas. Hard choices make us wiser, smarter, stronger, and wealthier, and easy choices reverse our progress focusing our energies on comfort or entertainment. In every difficult moment, ask yourself, what is a hard choice and what is an easy choice? And you will know instantly what is right. <laughs> Does that even need commentary? Mm -mm. Not really. <laughs> yeah. yeah, makes sense. That's a great thing to think about. Yeah. So, Discipline equals freedom. Discipline is hard, man. Yeah, you know how you said, like, pay now or pay later kind of thing? Yeah. You know? Like, if you want to pay later. Or if you want to, a lot of people, they try to pay later, you know? Yeah, well, I, re like, 
So I heard one the other day. You can either suffer the pain of discipline or the pain of regret. Right, right. Same thing. Same thing. Same exact thing. Yeah. People saying the same thing must mean something. Yeah. It must mean something. Pay attention to it. Yeah. All right, moving to the next section here, page 127 from Tribe of Mentors, Amelia Boone. And she wakes up at like three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> she's legit. And she's four-time world champion in the sport of obstacle course racing. I met her a couple times. You met her too. Yeah. Yeah, she's a beast and What's cool about her is she f beats, like she did the 2012 World's Toughest Mudder competition. It's 24 hours, 90 miles, 300 obstacles. She finished second overall out of more than 1,000 competitors, including 80% of which are male. Mm. Second overall. Did I have to say something about being durable yeah, earlier? Yeah. <laughs> That's durable. Yeah. So, Amelia, awesome human, and the last one we'll do here, but she, she got asked, you know, same question, if you could have a gigantic billboard anywhere with anything on it, what would you say and why? And Amelia says, no one owes you anything. We live in a world that's rampant with entitlement, with many people believing that they deserve to be given more. My parents raised me to be self-sufficient and it pressed upon me that the only person you can really depend on in life is you. If you want something, you work for it. You don't expect it to be given. If others help you along the way, that's fantastic, but it's not a given. I believe that the key to self-sufficiency is breaking free of the mindset that someone somewhere owes you something or will come to your rescue. No one owes you anything. No one's coming to your rescue. It's on you. Obviously, mm. I couldn't agree more. And it's funny because, as she said, I mean, we, we know the importance of a team. And you always hear people say, you know, you can't do it by yourself. And I'm not here. I'm here because of so many different people. And that's true. But that doesn't mean that you can sit around and rely on other people to save you or yeah. to do the heavy lifting or even to help you out in any other way. Help from other people is a luxury. It's a luxury that you shouldn't count on. So step up and own it and make it happen because no one owes you anything. That book is Tribe of Mentors, Timothy Ferris. He's got Timothy, not Tim anymore. Damn. Timothy Ferris. Good. Short life advice from the best in the world. Mm -hmm. All right, speaking of helping people, Echo Charles. Yeah. Maybe you can help people learn how to support themselves. Yeah. And maybe if they want to also simultaneously support this yeah. podcast if they want to that 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 would be fantastic but we're not relying on it is that kind of the theme no, I'm, you know? I'm hoping yeah, if hope. not hey I got this I'll run with it sure oh yeah sure of course sure you no. want me to run with it because no, I'll, I'll be done with bro, it in like four minutes bro, I'm here <laughs> what's interesting is that kind of depend on you and rely on you to kind of help bail me out this podcast otherwise they'd just be kind of talking to myself uh, okay Jack. Actually, I wouldn't be talking because I typically talk after you talk, like in reaction to you. So if it was the Echo podcast, it would just be silence. Yeah, it wouldn't even be good evening <laughs> because you say good evening, you know. Uh, Dang. Yeah. No podcast. Jack. It's all good. So, yeah, support yourself, right? All right, we'll talk about krill oil. Jocko has krill oil. Jocko super krill oil. Super. Super krill. Yeah. And also Jocko joint warfare. Glucosamine chondroitin. This is all for your joints. The yeah. best type of supplement, in my opinion. You know when? Have you been into other supplements? Not, 
not in a long time. Yeah, so I've I have like in my younger days where I'd take like I don't know protein powder or like this thing yeah. that does this. You mm-hmm. know, I can say with full on honesty that when I'd stop taking it, there really wasn't that much of a difference. You <laughs> well, what happens when you stop taking drug warfare? That's the thing. Yeah. Y- yeah. So there is a difference, and especially I mean I don't know I'm I'm whatever age I am now. We don't mm-hmm. have to go into that part. But so I don't know. I don't know how it is to take krill oil when I was like in my 20s. So I don't know. Yeah. You know, kind of thing. But I know now. And I'll tell you this. And I have gotten off it for like a, it was like maybe a week, a little, little bit more than a week. And yeah, they, they came back, man. The joint situation. Yeah. You know what I think? You know what I think the krill oil and the joint warfare do? Hmm. Make you durable. Yeah. <laughs> Make you durable. They do. I believe they contribute greatly yeah. to my durability. Yeah, and that's and it's actually saying a lot for me cuz and for you too, big time because you're you're not like a small guy. You're not a small no. person. And let's face it, we're older than we were before. <laughs> that is a true statement. No we are what. older than we were before. <laughs> and you you we you actually more so than me, you do like hard stuff. Yeah. Like lifting jujitsu like hard stuff yeah check harder than the normal person maybe some people not amelia boom yeah she's out doing 90 300 obstacle courses yeah see, so 300 she'll obstacles probably, at 90 miles i know man I don't know if i'll I send do her that. some yeah see what up if she's not already on it yeah or something like it nonetheless the joint situation is like that's saying a lot if if you can do the stuff that you do and i just kind of doing some introspection kind of detaching whatever mm. i'm looking at the stuff that i do it's like man it helps a lot i don't think i'd be able to go as hard oh no you definitely wouldn't like just daily my you shoulder can't. healed yeah my elbow straight Both up of them. yeah elbow. there you go and my knees bro, i put abuse on my knees with with like working out and jujitsu because they're kind of loose skinny knees. and skinny <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought you would have said that but um like they're super loose where when i blew out my knee in college the doctor when he you know they do the test mm-hmm. they're like okay before they do the mri they do the tests mm-hmm. all these tests they just kind of wiggle them and do all this stuff from different positions and they wiggled both of them and they're like bro your knees are loose like yeah. this just Did genetic the doctors tell genetic you that thing. they were skinny too <laughs> <laughs> anyway oh, sorry, man. they were loose and then you said you had skinny knees i do and skinny ankles get up right now anyway, <laughs> anyway i um, and then I hurt my knee when I was rolling with Greg and I went to, uh, the doctor who performed the surgery on my bicep and he did, he was like, Oh yeah, you have a blown ACL. And I was like, Whoa, I only have, I hurt the outside of my knee or the inside of my knee, not the outside or not my, I didn't blow out my right. knee. He's like, no, you blew out your knee. I was like, dang. And I was like, Oh, but, but he didn't run any comprehensive tests. He mm-hmm. just did it real quick, yeah. like wiggled it. And then I was like, whoa, my doctor in college said I have really loose knees, so check this one. And there's, he had like another person there. And he goes, um, and he checks the other one. He was like, whoa, whoa. Huh. But the difference is when you wiggle a no ACL knee, it doesn't like abruptly stop, even if it's loose. You uh. see what I'm saying? So like if you have no ACL, it's like, it's like a blunt. Like, uh. It's like if you had a, a big accord in there. Like a real ten- yeah. like a tension cord or something that didn't didn't stretch at all, and mine are just a little bit longer. You see what I'm saying? Hmm. So I have loose knees. Nonetheless, so the point is, I know long explanation. I understand. When I roll jujitsu, they'll pop out sometimes. Loose and skinny. And then if <laughs> if they pop out, and then I like kick or straighten out real quick or whatever, it'll pop out, and you know how your your bones they're kind of shaped like this. They'll yeah. do this, and then they'll get like caught on each <laughs> other. And when they get caught on each other and you press, it'll like mess up the cartilage. Yeah. So they, they'll get swollen on the inside. At the end of the day, they get swollen for like some days. So yeah. I got to like warm them up more or whatever. But yeah, I take I just take the krill oil. I don't I just ignore the swelling. Mm-hmm. Even, no factor. And I'm pretty flexible too. Check. Nonetheless. Anyway, you want to support yourself. There you go. Jocko super krill oil and joint warfare. Boom. Physical support on your supportive structures. Also, if you're into jujitsu, Origin has a new gi. 
what is it? Your signature gi? Is that what you, you call it? I don't it? know you know about you, all that. Yeah, no, it's I mean, the that's gi a, that says cool stuff on it. Yeah. That's when it goes freedom. Get after it. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess technically as far as what a signature something would yeah. be. Yeah, that's the Jocko gi. It's not called the Jocko well, gi. Well, no. We wouldn't be having it. I yeah. guess we have Jocko podcasts. <laughs> Yeah, but that's just for a lack of a better name, true, really. True. This one, yeah, no. Well, anyway, the they got the gi. gi, the deaf gi. Yep. Discipline equals freedom. Gi. It's mm-hmm. a good one. Kind of lighter weight. It's um. Pete told he, Pete, Pete said that the the weave. It's yeah. Like, it's, it's an athletic weave. It's a yeah. real weave. Yeah. It's not just taking cotton, which is what, which is what they just make pants from 1908 from yeah no yeah. it's an athletic and when you put it in the dryer or you put it in the washing machine when you get done it's almost dry it's got cotton in it but it's also got a, a poly blend yeah yeah the so good stuff that, yeah. and it's all made here in america from the seed of the cotton the very seed that you plant the seed i wonder where they get the seeds from south probably carolina, here i think yeah it's either tennessee or south carolina yeah so I even this- one. we'll find out yeah even buying the seeds or, or acquiring the seeds in whatever capacity yeah. is here in America, planted in America, cotton grows in America, harvested in America, obviously. Died in America. Died in America. Shipped up to Maine. Where Pete weaves it in a bunch of looms into fabric and into geese. Boom, yeah. right on your back to start rolling. All made in America. That's all the stuff at yeah. Origin, by the way, if you don't know already. Yeah, they got some good rash guards and compression gear, which is what the same thing. Yes. Rash guards and compression. I've gear. noticed because I didn't used to use rash guards other than for surfing. Yeah. Do you notice you feel a little bit um, like the compression helps you athletically? Do you feel that? I don't feel that. No, but that I'm not. I don't think I'm paying attention. To be honest with you, placebo. I'm just trying perhaps. to. What Maybe. about people that get 19% improvement in their jiu-jitsu oh, skills? That's real. <laughs> that's 100% real. But me, what, you know, as far as, but I hear good things about compression. Mm-hmm. Like I see the links to articles that say all the performance benefits and all this stuff. Here's the thing. I don't read them. I don't know. So I wear knee pads when I roll. Yeah. And I wear them for two reasons. Well, I wear them for three reasons. Number one, just, uh, abrasions on the knee right yeah. whatever map burn on your knee which is cool you get it maybe you get it maybe you get it once every three days yeah. that's once every three days you got map burn on your knee and yeah. you got blood and you got people that are like hey i don't want to roll with you because you're bleeding or whatever so that's mm-hmm. just a pain mm-hmm. number two it for me keeps them warm right the oh, right, knee right. sleeves just, just just warms up your knees, yeah. and number three, it provides a little bit of compression that makes me feel good. Now I feel when I put on a rash guard, mm-hmm. I feel like that on my body, which is good. Yeah, I don't know. I think it feels good. Yeah, so, yeah. Compression gear. I, you out. know, I I can't speak really on it, but I for damn sure can't speak against it. And it's all made in America, and they're dope. Do some research. Yeah, yeah. If if that even matters, you know, does that matter that much? Well, well, you wear it because it's uh, efficient to roll in for sure. Yeah, the most efficient thing you can roll in is a rash guard. Yeah, I feel like like a that's the uniform. B all the 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 what do you call it ergonomic? Nah, it's not ergonomic. <laughs> it's like you know how like how you said the mat burn. You don't get mat burn like all day every day. It's yeah. just like yeah, if you yeah. if you're going super hard and your knee or your elbow or whatever it happens to be against the mat at it, you know, it's like it's a happenstance situation. Unless you're new, unless you're new, you're no, getting mat get burn. Mat burn all all Isn't over that your, weird the way the your body your, learns yeah. proprioception to keep you from getting? Hey, yeah. you notice if you haven't rolled for a long time, you'll get yeah. you'll, your feet get all mat burned <laughs> your up. Feet, top of your, your feet. Your knees get all mat yeah. burned up. You know? Yeah, when you're when you know when you're in the roll mode, you barely get mat burn. Yeah, you get it like once every three or four rolls. Well, once yeah. every three or four days, you'll get a little mat burn on the top of your toes. Or yeah, bro, I haven't had mat burn on top of my toes in like long time. Oh, really? It's like That's yeah, it's like your skin gets smart. You're like, oh, what are we doing? Rolling? Okay, we yeah. gotta toughen up right now. Have you ever rolled on a like a Resolite wrestling mat? barefoot after you've been rolling on a hard tatami mat for a while? No, it takes no. like a, a week to get used to it. Why? Because you will stub your toe a bunch because your toes it's won't like, know where to go because they're yeah. deeper and softer. Yeah, it's like when you play football on grass and you go to artificial there turf. You, you got to get used to that. Yeah, it's yep. weird. Yeah, yep. that's true. Anyway, 
cool compression gear good i'm glad that it's compression because some people do care about that and i think that if i you think know, i'm one of those people well if you know the benefits and you're benefiting from it there you go boom i just i don't think i just been paying attention but after this guess what i will because i'm not always right about things as far as the way i look at them also <laughs> also i want to talk about on it so i would go into my whole kettlebell routine which i smashed yesterday by the way i got a new cyclops one by the way um so again cool if you got regular kettlebells the regular ones that's good because doing kettlebells is way better than not doing kettlebells what i recommend is you get the good ones the dope uh decorative artistic deck i don't like decorative you like decorative the nope. word decorative no i'm <laughs> here to win artistic <laughs> artistic kettlebells i say get those ones they're just way cooler especially if you're into instagram stuff that's what i think it's my opinion nonetheless they got regular ones as well go to onit.com slash jocko they have a bunch of fitness stuff i noticed jocko's mace that he recommend yeah. i use for like other stuff which is actually part of a big point that you can use a lot of this stuff for like various different sorts of exercise activities True. yeah and they have like a bunch of cool stuff on there like um stuff that's different from your traditional bench squat you know like functional stuff check nonetheless on it.com slash jocko go there boom support yourself expand your workout man if you want you could be like Jocko does the same thing over and over and over and Actually, over my and over do and vary. over and over and over and my over workouts again. Do vary. Yeah. But they vary over and over <laughs> again. <laughs> they, they also have some strong Actually, similarities. So yeah, in, you're right. I get to I be honest. Myself. I do the same exact workout all the time. With variations, but those variations will come in yeah, cycles that go me. over We're and on over. The same and pattern. Yeah. But that's kind of the whole point of a workout though. Yeah. It's like your body gets used to yeah. certain activities. You can't let it get too used to it. Right. That's why they say, you know, you gotta switch it up, all the shock your body, all this stuff. But if you're constantly just shocking your body, it's like, okay, we're do we your body is kind of saying this to you. It's like, okay, what are we doing? I'm gonna get as good at it as possible. Okay, mm -hmm. so however many times we got to do this thing, I'm going to try it my best. As long as you feed me and rest me, I'm going to try my best to accommodate you as far as, you know, getting better at this thing. Now, if you give me one thing to do and say, get good at that, we're never doing it again. You're not going to, there, there's no real results except for maybe the underlying system, you know, maybe like your heart rate or your, you know, those types of things. Maybe your, um, what do you call your, you know, when you can endure like hard stuff. Mentally. Durable, yeah, like mental durability, maybe that. But no, if you do like one exercise, sure, you'll be sore, and then that's kind of it. The benefits of that program won't really. Then again, I don't know. I could be wrong. I could be missing like some new science on the whole deal. Nonetheless, research it. Research it. Get a good workout routine, and if you want to expand it, go to on it because they have the good stuff. Also, if you want to get Timothy. Ferris's book that Jocko was quoting. Jocko's in there, by the way. How many how many quotes do you have in there? I don't know. Eleven. He asked Dang, eleven questions. Eleven, 11 questions, answers. Questions, Jocko. So these and they're the same, right? They're the same as the same. As the, all the, the questions are the same. One, all this stuff, yeah. And here's the thing: like Tim will po post like little excerpts of, of yeah. that, like just little quotes, you know. Yep. And that's a really interesting thing that he did there where he asked everyone the same question. Well, yeah, because so, that's the type of person, Tim's personality. He looks for patterns and yeah, things, right? That's, so that's how that's, you find patterns. That's Ask super clever. Thing. Like it's, so it's basically you have 11 categories of advice that you can get from these top level people in different like industries, different. And then he's got like, uh, he's, he's kind of sorts them in the back mm -hmm. so you can see what everyone. He, he, he kind of assembles the information in some various ways in the yeah. back of the book so you can sort of pull yeah. and pool the knowledge. Yeah, man, that's it's pretty cool. That's yeah. good. Yeah, man, I actually like that kind. Um, but that is smart, though. So that's essentially what you have. You have this big book of advice from all these complete, that's complete e experts. <laughs> that is exactly what it is. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. So there you go. When you get that, just go to here. Look, we'll offer it. Jockopodcast.com. Go on the top, top menu, books from the episodes. Boom, I got you right there. Tribe of Mentors by Timothy Ferris. Click through there. It's a good way to support. 
you want to shop for anything else, go ahead and do that. Carry on, man. Support away. Some people think that that's not a big deal. It is a big deal. Just clicking through there, I mean. It is a big deal. Small. You mean it's hard to do? Easy to do. It's small action. Small action. Big reaction. Mm. Yep. It's like sodium when you throw it into water. Anyway, <laughs> subscribe to the podcast. YouTube. That's for the video version. But on iTunes and Google Play, Stitcher, all the podcasting, providing platforms. Seems seems obvious, but you know, if you haven't already subscribed, it's a good way to support. Also, YouTube, like I said, video version of this podcast. Also, excerpts if you want to share little ideas that have emerged from the podcast. You want to share them individually. They're on there. Most of them. I work on them every week. Put them on there. You can share them. It's a good reason to subscribe to the YouTube. Also, I'll put some, uh, you know how people, what, what's called is like mashups. They're called mashups. Yeah. When you put like no, an excerpt of your voice. Oh, and they put music. Videos. Yes. Yeah. They put some video, so, you know, some visual aid is what it's called. Wait, do you make mashups? I make, I don't, here's the thing though. So a mashup is like, you just take various clips, you know, of whatever, you know, like they're just visually. You do like a whole thematic thing. See, and that's kind of the thing. So I don't know. It's been a while though, so isn't it really? When you think about it. Kind of. I don't know. Okay. Maybe sometimes they I'm get sorry. hard. Um, yeah. Creative so I don't know. block. Yeah. Read the war of art. Or I might be just working diligently and obsessively on maybe new approaches and methods. Put the war of art on our, on our site too, so people can get that. The war of art. Yeah, I read yeah. that one. It was good. Yeah, I, I need to maybe revisit it for this for the Apparently. video production standpoint. Nonetheless, when I do make those videos, I put them on YouTube, and that's yet another reason to subscribe. On top of the fact that it does support. The podcast. So it's like a big circle loop of support. You see what I'm saying? Also, Jocko has a store. It's called Jocko Store. JockoStore.com is where you can get your Discipline Equals Freedom shirt, Get After It shirt, and other shirts of that type. Also, Rash Guards on there. New Rash Guards on there. Two new Rash Guards on there. I don't know, two or three. You got to look. Jocko Pot or JockoStore.com. The rash guard is sodium. Small action. Oh, is big that reaction. That's a rash guard. I don't know if it's Dang. on yet. Yeah, I got to take the pictures. I got to list them, you know? So during that process, hopefully. You make um, it sound like that's real hard to do. <laughs> take pictures and list them. I'm, try, I'm trying to. Anyone want a job right? out there in the world? Anyway. Echo's having a hard time taking pictures of a rash guard. Warrior Kid it. Rash Guards for youth. Nice. For the warrior kids themselves. Nice. So look out for that. My little daughter was sporting hers today. I know, bro. It looks good. It looks, it looks good. It looks very, 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 very good. Nonetheless, they're on there. Jockstore.com. Got some hats on there. Beanie's coming as well. Um, And, you know, other stuff. Beanies. Look on there. Yes. Yeah. I'm not saying go buy a beanie. I'm not saying that. You might not need one. Maybe you're in Hawaii. Yeah, but you'll wear a beanie in Hawaii just for the oh, look. Dear. Yeah. But maybe you're in Chi Town. Yeah. And you need a beanie. You're in Michigan. Somewhere. Dang. Nonetheless, go on there. If you like something, get something. Good way to support. Also, psychological warfare on your campaign against weakness. That's what we're going with right now. Campaign against weakness. Improving yourself. You're going from a person who is, with, who is incapable of detaching, who is incapable of understanding the message rather than your feeling about the message. You're If you're that person, yet you're on the path to become a different person, someone who can understand the message first, feeling second. The ability to detach, we're always working on it. And if you're working on that as well, this is what you do. You hit those moments of weakness, you have this album with tracks, Jocko tracks, called Psychological Warfare. What it does is it takes any little element of your campaign against weakness, any little element that you might slip on, that you might, you see that? Yeah, hey, I sounded like you right there, you see that? You might slip on it. Oh. You may feel a little weak <laughs> when you wake up or, or when you're about to wake up. When you're about to get up. When you wake up, you're about to get up. It's 4.30 and you're like, dang, I'm going to press the snooze. Don't worry. There's a track for that. You play that track. Jocko give you pragmatic advice on why you shouldn't hit the snooze. Same thing goes for skipping your workout. Same thing goes for skimping on your diet, slipping on your diet. 
um, creative blah, procrastinate, all these things. It's like tracks for where Jock was telling you why you shouldn't do that. It's like, hey, don't do that. You know, this is why, this is why, why um, it's beneficial for you to continue all that stuff. It's a good one. It helps. 100% effective in spotting people when they need a little spot. If, they, if, if you need a spot. Sometimes you don't need a spot. Sometimes you're just getting after it 100%. But that's a good one for that. You also on Amazon can get Jocko White Tea, which is good. If you don't believe me, go read the reviews on there. I'll read some of them again. I've read a couple of them on here, but you can read them yourself. The reviews explain that when you drink Jocko White Tea, you can deadlift 8,000 pounds at a minimum. So that's a guarantee. Yeah. People don't understand. It's yeah. Guaranteed. Yeah. Yeah, if you don't think you, if you can't, I'll give you your money back for the tea. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, I also got some books. You can get them anywhere, really. Way of the Warrior Kid. Uh, thank you, everyone that gives me feedback all the time. L- kids that are doing various things like studying, like reading the book, studying, doing jujitsu, doing pull-ups. Swimming competing just all kinds of awesome stuff everything from figure skating to ballet to wrestling seen it all Mm -hmm. Little warrior kids getting after it That's a book for any kid that you want to put on the proper path Of discipline of hard work The next book the next warrior kid book is coming out April 28th I'll let you know when it pops up for pre-order. <laughs> Extreme Ownership, the new edition is out. It's longer. It has a little new forward in it. It's got some new pictures, color pictures, by the way. Color. Oh, dang. Stepping it up. Now. No, I don't like that. Oh, I was like, no, make that. them black and white. Black and white only. That's how I roll. Yeah, yeah. There's also some Q&A on there, which is the Q&A that's in the new version mm-hmm. is from this podcast which means it's from you listeners so thank you for the questions and also the new version it's black and it's flat black did you notice that oh, it's flat yeah. black yeah, yeah. did you notice that flat black. Yeah. yeah that makes it even better than True. just regular black right well what's regular black <laughs> glossy oh glossy black. you hear that dog barking yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's legit <laughs> <laughs> savage yeah. yeah there must be somebody invading yeah the podcast space uh, yeah, you can get the, the new version of Extreme Ownership right now. Flat black, questions from the podcast, all that. Also, Discipline Equals Freedom Field Manual. So um, this is book. It's not a normal book, right? We know that. It, it's a book that when you, if you give it to somebody, they don't feel like, oh, he just went and grabbed me a book. They don't yeah, feel yeah, like that. Yeah, they yeah. think, oh, dang. Well, dang. <laughs> yeah, because it's not normal. Yeah. So... The publisher knows that, right? So they wanted a little tagline. And they sent me some, hey, we come up with some taglines. And they, they gave me this tagline. Sure. Can I make fun of my publisher? Yes. Okay. Especially if they sound it sounds like, like I'm going to do that right now. <laughs> so my publisher, they say, we're going to have a little tagline. You can sell your book. And they said, well, you know, here's our tagline. This book makes a, makes a great gift for the holiday season. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that, right? <laughs> and they send me, because because I always say, like, hey, don't be saying stuff about my stuff without asking me first. Yeah. Because you guys will say dumb stuff about my cool stuff, and I don't like that. <laughs> yeah. So they said, this book makes a great holiday gift or whatever. And I said, no. And I thought about it for four seconds. Yeah. And I wrote them back and I said, use this. There is no better gift than the gift of discipline. Boom. Factually, there's your tagline. (laughs) So for your people in your life that you don't want to get them a stupid gift, like a necktie or a belt or something else that they don't want or need, they need this book. The best gift you can give is the gift of discipline. Dang. So there you go. That's a, hey, by the way, people keep asking me and I keep telling everyone, everyone wants the audio version of this book. And they say, when is it coming out? It's out. Mm-hmm. It's out. The audio version of Discipline Equals Freedom 
Field Manual. It's out right now. It's on iTunes. It's on Amazon Music. It's on Google Play. It's on other MP3 platforms. The reason we did that is because if you put it on Audible, Audible, you can't pull it out as tracks yeah. and use it for alarm or use it to spot yourself if you get a moment of weakness, which this book is good for. So that's where you can get the audio version. Beyond the books, beyond the podcast for leadership training and execution with your business or your team, you can contact our leadership consulting company. It's me, it's Leif Babin, it's JP Dinell, it's Dave Burke. You can email info at echelonfront.com. And if you have questions for us or you have answers for us, we wanna hear them both. You can communicate with us on the interwebs, on Twitter, on Instagram, and on Facebook. <laughs> Echo is at Echo Charles, and I am at Jocko Willink. And to the service men and women worldwide right now, defending freedom, thank you for your service and for giving us the ability to do this podcast. And to the families of those servicemen and women that are supporting them from home, thank you for your sacrifice day to day. It is much appreciated. And to the police, law enforcement, firefighters, paramedics, other first responders, thank you for doing what you're doing, which is keeping us safe here at home and answering the call when it comes. And to everyone else that's listening, just remember that sure, you have a team. You have friends and family and coworkers and colleagues and you have a support network and you have people you can call and that's great, but don't count on them. Don't wait for them. Don't assume that they are coming to the rescue. Take lead, take ownership, Take action, get out there, and get after it. So, until next time, this is Echo and Jocko, out.